As mayor of the city of Stanton, I call the regular Stanton City Council meeting to order on March 24th, 2022 at 7.30. The first item, the fire marshal has asked me to just let everyone know that um, if you're in the chambers, um, please take a seat. If you're not able to find a seat, uh, he said we cannot have folks standing, so you'll have to go out into the hallway. Um, so hopefully there'll be enough seats for everyone. Uh, the only other time that you can be in the room without finding a seat is if you're speaking at the podium. All right. I would also like to recognize is, uh, Chairman Kenneth Venable in the room. I thought I saw him earlier. No. All right. All right. Um, Mr. Boyle, can you introduce the school board members in attendance? All right. Well, thank you for attending the meeting. So, welcome. Welcome, sir. Is, is Amy here? I saw her here. Earlier. Okay. All right. All right. The next item is the Pledge of Allegiance. If you would like, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. Allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God. Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, the next item is the invocation moment of silence. And tonight, it, the uh, invocation will be given by Councillor Amy Darby. Good evening. This evening, I will be saying a Christian prayer for the invocation. If you choose to join me, please feel free to do so. And if you do not, that's fine. That's your choice. Uh, but I would ask everyone that wants to join in to please bow their head at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for allowing us to gather here this evening. Thank you for the opportunity to listen, learn, and work together for the betterment of our city. Please grant each of us kind hearts, which allow us to put aside our differences and come together in unity. Please grant each of us the ability to speak respectfully to others. Please grant us the ability to clearly hear what is important for our city. Please grant us wisdom, dear Lord, to make decisions that will be beneficial to Stanton. I ask these things for your glory, dear God, and your son Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Amen. All right. Thank you. Next is the mayor's report. And the first item is a proclamation for National Public Health Week 2022. City of Stanton, Virginia proclamation National Public Health Week, April 4th through 10th, 2022. Whereas the President of the United States traditionally designates the first full week of April as National Public Health Week. And whereas National Public Health Week is scheduled for April 4th to the 10th, 2022, and the theme is Public Health is Where You Are. And whereas, since 1995, the American Public Health Association, through its sponsorship of National Public Health Week, has educated the public, policymakers, and public health professionals about issues important to improving the public's health. And whereas, this Central Shenandoah Health District mission is to protect and to promote the health and well-being of residents in the Central Shenandoah Valley. And whereas the Central Shenandoah Health District serves the counties of Augusta, Bath, Highland, Rockbridge, and Rockingham, and the cities of Buena Vista, Harrisonburg, Lexington, Stanton, and Waynesboro, with an estimated combined population of 308,875 citizens. And whereas the Central Shenandoah Health District's public health professionals help our communities prevent, prepare for, withstand, and recover from the impact of a full range of health threats, including diseases, outbreaks such as the COVID-19 pandemic, natural disasters, and disasters caused by human activity. And whereas the Central Shenandoah Health District's public health professionals have and continue to display 
an unprecedented commitment to serve our communities in response to the COVID-19 pandemic by administering local and regional programs involving testing, contact tracing, case investigations, vaccinations, outbreak investigations, and information campaigns to combat this public health crisis. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by Stanton City Council that April 4th through the 10th, 2022, in the city of Stanton is hereby designated as National Public Health Week, during which our residents may join in celebrating the dedication of our public health professionals, past and present, and their families who support and allow them to serve our communities. Dated this 24th day of March, 2022, Andrea W. Oaks, Mayor. Now, it's my understanding. Yes, absolutely. My understanding on behalf of the Central Shenandoah Health District, the Environmental Health Specialist, Kenneth Hurst, is here to accept the proclamation. There you are. <laughs> I just like to thank you, Mayor and, and the City Council for approving this. We appreciate that. Thank you for the thank you for the support. Thank you, and thank you for everything that you do. If you would like to stay, feel free, but um, if you have some other things to do, um, we will not have our feelings hurt if you decide to leave. I, I understand, <laughs> yes. All righty. Um, the next proclamation. City of Stanton, Virginia proclamation. Miss Virginia Senior America Day, April 2nd, 2022. Whereas Miss Senior America LLC is an organization that honors and enriches the lives of the nation's senior women and others. And whereas the Miss Senior America philosophy is based upon the belief that seniors are the foundation of America and our most valuable treasure. And whereas the women of Miss Senior America help others through their community service forms as an example to the other seniors in order to educate, promote, and dignify the value of America's senior citizens. And whereas the Miss Senior America pageant is a search for the gracious lady who best exemplifies the dignity, maturity, and inner beauty of all senior Americans. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by Stanton City Council that April 2nd, 2022, in the city of Stanton, is hereby designated as Miss Virginia Senior America Day, dated this 24th day of March, 2022, by Andrea W. Oaks, Mayor. So, all right. With us, we have... We have with us representing from the Senior America and a former Miss Virginia Senior America, Linda Huntley, and, and uh, the current Miss Virginia Senior America, Rhonda Howdy Shell, and the former Miss Virginia Senior America, Lilshi Huffman. Well, she want to say a few words. <laughs> I've done that before. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Mayor Oaks, members of the city council, on behalf of Virginia Senior America, we would like to thank you very much for proclaiming April 2nd as Miss Virginia Senior America Day in Stanton. That is the day that our new Miss Virginia Senior America 2022, Rhonda Moffat Howdy Shell, will be crowned as the new Miss Virginia Senior America and will not only represent this area but also the state of Virginia at the national pageant in September in Hershey, Pennsylvania. I stand before you tonight for the last time as Miss Virginia Senior America 2019-2020. And I thank you for all that you have done over the past three years to support Senior America and the seniors and senior ladies. We. Um, are very viable in our communities and are still very, very active. And that's one of the things that Senior America does is to promote what us senior ladies can do and that we rock. Yes, <laughs> Thank you all very much. Well, the applause was so loud, I could not hear myself in the microphone. Um, well, thank you for everything that you do for our community. And if you would like to stay, um, again, you're more than welcome. We'll yield our seats to someone. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. All righty. I understand. Well, thank you. After again. working 50 years, this retired grandma is going to have a lot of fun representing Virginia senior ladies. And it's not just all fluff. It's also about being in Congress. Absolutely. And um, good luck in Hershey, Pennsylvania. Thank, Thank, you. Thank, you. Thank you. All right. Ready? All right, we have one more proclamation, the City of Stanton, Virginia Proclamation. Local Government Education Week, April 3rd through the 9th, 2022. Whereas, since the colonial period, the Commonwealth of Virginia has closely held the institutions of local government, and whereas local governments throughout the Commonwealth provide valuable services to the citizens of the communities they serve, and whereas citizen service such as law enforcement, public health and safety, recreational opportunities, and educating local children are most often delivered at the local level. And whereas in recognition of the work performed by local governments, the Virginia General Assembly on February 29th, 2012, designated the first week in April as Local Government Education Week in Virginia. And whereas April 2nd, 1908, was the date of establishment of the council manager form of government in the city of Stanton, thereby making the first week in April appropriate for this designation. Now, therefore, be it proclaimed by Stanton City Council that April 3rd through the 9th, 2022, in the city of Stanton is hereby designated as Local Government Education Week in the city of Stanton, and that Stanton City Council will promote civic education and engagement in an effort to educate citizens about their local government, strengthen the sense of community, and engage the next generation of local government managers. Dated this 24th day of March, 2022, Mayor, Mayor Andrea W. Oaks. And it's my understanding that we have from Mary Baldwin University, political science professor, Dr. Laura Van Assendelf, and three students in her state and local politics class, uh, Katie Keegan, Anita Heiner, and Aisha Mokit. Dr. Van Assenfeld, are you... Yes, I'm here. I, I just want to thank you, Mayor Oaks and, and members of City Council for um, awarding us with this proclamation and the students can tell you a little bit more about what they've been doing. They've been coming to your meetings and researching issues. So I'll give them a chance to talk. Oh, that sounds great. Welcome. Anita, Katie, um, Aisha, I, either one oh. of you, if you want to yeah, so we are all in the state and local politics course at Mary Baldwin, and as one of our assignments, we've had to go to a couple of the state and city council meetings throughout the semester and follow some kind of local policy issue and um, to kind of expose us like one or 
directly to what how local government is. So thank you all for allowing us to sit in on these virtually or in person for some of us. Absolutely. So Anita or Aisha, would either one of you like to say a few words? Hello, this is Aisha. Hello. Um, I, <laughs> I don't actually live in the city of Stanton, but I'm also taking the politics class. And, um, you know, I've been watching the town hall meetings for my county, for Edward County, and I found it very fascinating. And I've heard the saying that all politics is local, and I believe that. Definitely. Anita? Can um, Anita hear us? Uh, oh, yeah, Anita, you're muted, of course. Well, that's okay. Um, oh. oh, there she is. She's, it yeah. looks like she's having trouble connecting. I, I understand. Hi, can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, I was having technical difficulties. Um, okay. Yes, I've been following the Stan City Council this semester for a class, and it's been a really great experience. Um, I haven't really followed closely before, but I have appreciated the time to kind of get to know what's going on in our community and learning more about politics. So I appreciate that opportunity. Well, thank you. And thank you for attending the meeting. Um, and Dr. Van Assendelf, we have a beautiful proclamation for you. We'll make sure that you get it. Thank you. Well, thank you. Okay, the next item under the mayor's report, I would just like to mention that I, I had the honor of um, speaking to Mrs. Lynn Hare's class. Uh, in her class, I have a, um, a pen pal. And so I was able to uh, go to the class and speak on serving as mayor. And I was given this beautiful gift. Uh, it's, um, it's a book that has pictures that the uh, kids have drawn and then the different uh, pen pal letters to the various um, civic leaders throughout Stanton. So this was quite an honor. And I'm gonna tell you what, fourth graders can ask really difficult questions. <laughs> <laughs> also, I had the opportunity of being interviewed by this, this morning uh, by a Mary Baldwin University student that is in a, a Dr. Van Essendelf's class. Her name is Sophia Frey. And Sophia uh, has been paying attention. She too asked a lot of very difficult questions, but what better way to learn? So thank you for that opportunity, Dr. Van Essendelf. I appreciate the fact that um, there is so much interest at Mary Baldwin, and I appreciate the interest in the um, Stanton school system, in particular, Miss Lynn Hare's class. Thoroughly enjoyed it. And I even mentioned to her that maybe we can have um, members of her class in the future attend a city council meeting and sit next to the council members um, and help us out on our decisions. So we'll have to look into that, Ms. Beauregard. All right, the next item is additional items by members of council. Madam Mayor. Councilor Claffey. Uh, this morning I attended the Economic Development Authority meeting for a lengthy several hours and we are discussing the public forum that is coming up next Thursday night at 5.30. The public is invited to the Blackburn Inn and we'll be meeting in the, the uh, conference room there at 5.30 Thursday, March 31st. Council is expected to attend and we do not have the budget work session next week. They begin uh, April 7th. So therefore everybody's invited to come and if you have any questions that you would like to have uh, pre, uh, presented, please contact Billy Vaughn through next Tuesday. And he's at our office here on the third floor. And if you have any questions that you would like to see addressed. But for the most part, it's going to discuss why the Western State Hospital property was acquired many years ago, the efforts and accomplishments since the acquisition, and where do we go from here? You will be hearing from the Timmons Group as we search for a marketing firm, et cetera. It's going to be some exciting information, and you'll see uh, some Zoom photos of the 19 buildings that used to be there that were Western State that uh, 
17 of them are now gone. 18 of them are now gone. It sounds exciting. Next Thursday night. Did you have can another I, item? Can I continue? Yes. Yes, you may. <laughs> <laughs> All right. On uh, the nominating committee met on March 16th, 2022, and like to make the following motion. To appoint Ron Garber to the Economic Development Authority to fill the unexpired term of Greg Campbell, ending January 31st, 2023. To appoint Sandy Carraro to the Tourism Advisory Board for a three-year term beginning April 1st, 2022 and ending March 31st, 2025. To appoint Brian Gerhardt as Hotel Representative for the Tourism Advisory Board to fill the unexpired term of Damon Strickland ending February 28th, 2024. To appoint Rebecca Cochran to the Library Board for a four-year term beginning April 1st, 2022 and ending February 28th, 2026. And to reappoint Carolyn Dole for the Central Shenandoah Planning District Commission Executive Committee. All right. And that's in a form of a motion. We do not need a second since it's coming from a committee. So are there any comments by council members? Any questions? Hearing this none. is Carol and Dahl. Uh, Councilor Dahl. I would like for these uh, uh, nominations to be done separately, and I will be abstaining on mine, of course. Okay, so yeah. Mr. Blair, that's in a um, that's, secondary motion? Right, that's an amendment yeah. to Mr. Claffey's motion, so... <laughs> There would need to be a second and then a vote on Ms. Dole's proposal okay. to take them separately. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second. All right. We have a second by Councillor Holmes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessler, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? No. Mr. Holmes? Yes. Mr. Claffey? No. Ms. Dole? No, I guess, because it's not going to pass now, but I'll have to abstain on everybody else's uh, nomination. So thanks, people. Right, continue calling the roll. Ms. Darby? No. Mayor Oaks? No. Motion fails. All right, we go back to the original motion, um, which does not need a second, that is correct. So any further discussion? Hearing none. Yes, this is Carolyn Dahl. I just wanna make it clear to everyone in the audience that because I am one of the people nominated and I'm not going to vote on myself, I would, need, I would abstain from that. But because they won't separate them, I have to abstain on everybody's nomination. So with that, I'll be abstaining. Okay. All right, I voted no because we um, do not want to embarrass any individual um, by voting separately if there are any votes against that individual. So Mr. Kessaker, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Ms. Dole? I abstain. Motion carries. All righty. Thank you. That leads us on to, well, are there any other additional items by members of council? Um, okay. Can I make that uh, statement? Under additional items by members of council. Yes, Ms. Dole. Ms. Dahl? you make a statement, please? Well, as, as I've been we've done a little research, to my knowledge, they were never, ever broken down during your mayoralship. Why do you want to start it now? Because I couldn't vote because I was a, one of the nominees. I understand that. Okay. I understand. All right. That's Are fine. there any additional items by members of council? Hearing none. We'll move on to the approval of minutes. I'll entertain a motion for the work session and regular meeting minutes of March 10th, 2022. Anybody? <laughs> I have that. 
Madam Mayor. I, Councillor Claffey. I move that we approve the minutes of the March 10th work session and regular meeting as presented. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, Vice Mayor Mark Robertson has second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessiker, please call the roll. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. That takes us to the regular meeting. Item A is a recognition of Fire and Rescue Chief Scott Garber in receipt of Virginia Fire Chief of the Year. Wow. Ms. Beauregard. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so let me do a quick introduction. On February 23rd, Governor Youngkin recognized our own Fire and Rescue Chief Scott Garber as a Fire Chief of the Year for the 2021 Governor's Fire Service Awards. Chief R. Scott Garber, R. Scott Garber is an accomplished fire chief with over 26 years of proven career fire services, emergency management, and leadership experience. Chief Garber has served as the city of Stanton's fire chief for the past 12 years. And as the fire chief, he is responsible for ensuring the city's 19.7 square miles composed of both urban and rural landscape is protected and prepared for all types of hazards and emergencies. Through his leadership and progressive fire services management, pre-planning and emergency response tactics, Chief Garber oversees the department's tactical response for an average of 4,000 calls annually. Chief Garber has received a litany of awards and honors during his career. So we are so grateful for his service to the community and to his wife and son for sharing him over the years. Chief Garber, congratulations, and thank you so much for your dedicated service. All right, Chief Garber, before you say anything at the uh, podium, um, I have a few words to read. All right, first off, congratulations, Chief Garber, and thank you for your service. I'd like to take a moment to read a small part of Governor Yunkin's statement. Under his leadership, Chief Garber has demonstrated for many years how greatly he cares for the community that he serves. He has continued his support for the Firefighters for Literacy program that was developed by the department in 2019. Chief Garber enables the department to interact and form pivotal relationships with the community. Leadership and inspiring confidence are common themes with Chief Garber. He has not only dedicated his time to the department, but also to educating others around the Commonwealth as he instructs more than 20 classes each year around the state. He goes above and beyond to advocate for members of the department and works tirelessly to ensure that staffing needs are met. Colleagues say they know Chief Garber has the entire department's best interests at heart and that this is something they all benefit from. So thank you. Thank you so much, Chief Garber, for your many years of dedication and for bringing this honor to Stanton. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, Mayor, members of council, uh, it wasn't for your support as well as city staff, uh, the 35 firefighters that work behind me every single day. If it wasn't for you, all of your support, this never would have occurred. Um, your, your staff is what makes you look good. So if you build a good staff, things just work out. So thank you for the honor tonight, I appreciate it. Um, it was very, uh, quite the honor to win the award um, as well as a surprise, but. Thank you all very much. Well, thank you. And I wanted to just let everyone know that um, Fire Chief Garber, he is also an excellent grant writer. I mean, one of the best that we have in the city of Stanton. So thank you for all the money you have brought into the city through your uh, talents with grant writing. Thank so, you, I appreciate that. We'd like to get some pictures with sure. you. And if anyone on council would like to join me. Yeah. Oh, 
yeah, sure. It looks a little neater. <coughs> I'll just stay up here. Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> Next item is item B, recognition of Matthew Robertson for years of service to the city of Stanton. Ms. Beauregard. Sure. Um, so this, we have a former sheriff, Matthew Robertson here tonight, and I can't think of a better person to introduce him than his brother, Vice Mayor Mark Robertson. <laughs> you may regret you asked this. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, first of all, on behalf of the city of Stanton, the city council would like to recognize Matthew Robertson for his years of dedicated service to the city and the many great things the sheriff department has accomplished. Now, to go in a little bit of history, Matthew first joined the sheriff's department in August 1992 at the age of 22, and at that time, it was the youngest deputy in the history of the city of Stanton. That has now uh, gone by the wayside because I think Matthew actually hired one younger than him at one point. Um, he was then hired by Stanton PD in April of 96, but he rejoined the Stanton Sheriff's Office in August of 2000. He was promoted to Sergeant in August of 2006. He became Chief Deputy in 2016 and then became Acting Sheriff on July 27th, 2016 due to Sheriff Caldwell's uh, unfortunate accident at that time. He was then elected sheriff in his own right, November 2017, and assumed his term January 1st, 2018. Uh, he was retired January 1st, 2022. As far as what Matthew accomplished, he started the first prescription drug take back program at the city sheriff's office in its history. He also started the first canine program in the office's history. Many of y'all then knew that canine Kara met an unfortunate, untimely death uh, while going uh, searching for a gun uh, uh, at, at a scene over in uh, Augusta County near Waynesboro. He then brought in a second canine, Canine Liberty, which the Stanton school kids had the, uh, the honor of, of uh, naming. And hopefully you will get to see her because she's out in the hall tonight with Matthew's entire, uh, entire office, which I'm so very glad to say that they're, and that they actually, you know, came to honor, honor him. He actually hired the first full-time female deputy in the department's history and then hired the second full-time female deputy. He also started the first reserve program to assist with courtroom needs that as the sheriff's department grew, it needed extra uh, uh, deputy power and actually to handle all of that. He became the first sheriff ever in the uh, city's history to apply for and receive grant money. He received over $120,000 through grants uh, and donations to buy and update courtroom security with 16 high def digital cameras inside and out. Plus, all deputies were then fitted with bulletproof vests, which the city had never had. And he hired the most highly trained officers with years of law enforcement experience or expertise in the history of the Stanton Sheriff's Office. 
I'd like to wish congratulations on your well-deserved retirement and enjoy a less stressful life, of which I saw many nights of that. Thank you for your service to this city. Congratulations. Well, Matt, we have um, a certificate, a framed certificate for you, and I'm going to go ahead and read it. It's the City of Stanton, Virginia presents the Certificate of Appreciation to Matthew H. Robertson in appreciation of your contributions to the betterment of the City of Stanton. The City hereby awards this honor for almost 30 years of outstanding law enforcement service, including four years as Stanton Sheriff to the leaders, employees, and citizens of the city of Stanton and signed by Mayor Andrea W. Oaks. So we would like to present this uh, certificate to you and if anyone on council would like to join um, Matt and myself for pictures. <laughs> We're gonna stand up here. We'll stand yeah. up here, let them get in there. I'll be the right. Congratulations. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Yes. Yeah. Right. Bring her in here. Right. Bring Liberty in. Hey, girl. She's so cute. Liberty. Wow, child. Hi, sweet Liberty. Hi, <laughs> oh. baby. Isn't she a sweetheart? <laughs> Hey, Liberty. Yes. Good girl. So sweet. Madam Mayor, I would like to say one thing if I could. Yes, sir. Please. I, wanna, <laughs> <laughs> I do want to echo uh, the same thing that, that Chief Garber uh, said. Uh, I was one person and the members of my office made me look good. And it was teamwork. And we all worked hard as a team to accomplish the things that we, we accomplished. And I couldn't have done it with Adam, and uh, uh, they're all here tonight, and, and I want to thank them from the bottom of my heart for, for all the work they put in, for all the time and effort, uh, toils and pain and stress that they went through to build the office to, to, work, to where we, we took it to. So, um, Guys, the ones that are here, thank you very much. And I, I truly appreciate all your hard work. Thank and, I, you. and I want to thank my wife for helping me get through it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> she, she said many nights that she had to share me with the entire city of Stanton. <laughs> and uh, the many phone calls at 11 o'clock uh, at night uh, and throughout the day, weekends, holidays. Uh, but... I wouldn't change it for the world. Uh, my 29, almost 30 years, I've enjoyed every bit of it. It was an honor and a pleasure to serve the citizens of Stanton. From a deputy to a police officer, a lot has changed since I was 22 years old. Uh, but I enjoyed every minute of it. And thank you all for the support that you've given me over the years. Thank you for your Have service. Have a great night. Less stressful. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, the next item is item C, recognition of Susan Sutton for years of service to the city of Stanton. Ms. Beauregard. Thank you. Uh, also this evening, we have Ms. Susan Sutton, deputy treasurer. And again, I can't think of a better person to introduce Ms. Sutton than 
her uh, former boss, Mr. Rick Johnson, who's the city treasurer. Madam Mayor, members of council, um, pleased to be here tonight for this occasion. Um, when I was elected 16 years ago, one of the rumors that was going around that I was going to come in and just clean house. I was going to get rid of staff. I was going to bring new people in and everything else. And I looked at myself and I told them that's not going to happen. Why would I throw away the kind of experience that we have in the fall office? I have uh, uh, my other two deputies here with me to, to share in honoring Susan tonight. And that was the smartest decision I've made since I took office was to keep the people in here that I have. Um, Susan has been here. She was 16 with me, 16 prior. You know, even I'm an accountant, I can add that that's 32 years of wonderful <laughs> service to the city. Uh, and that's to be commended, especially in a job that doesn't always get the uh, most uh, pleasant phone calls, if you should say that. Um, but her professionalism and dedication tempered with her uh, kindness and compassion always made things uh, a little easier. She was a person that always was willing to lend that extra hand, go that extra mile when somebody said that they had a problem. And uh, with all her duties and responsibilities to the office, it's gonna be a tough job to fill, uh, but she can go out holding her head held high for a job well done. And like everybody has said before, nobody gets accolades without a good staff behind them. And uh, that's why I brought uh, my other two deputies here with me to, to show that uh, we've all stick together, we've done well together and I couldn't have done anything in our office without the people behind me, especially the 32 years of experience and the joy that I've had working with Susan. So Susan, the city has a beautiful certificate for you as well that we have framed. I would like to read it. The city of Stanton, Virginia presents this certificate of appreciation to Susan E. Sutton, an appreciation of your contributions to the betterment of the city of Stanton. The city hereby awards this honor for over 32 years of outstanding deputy treasurer service to the leaders, employees, and citizens of the city of Stanton. Son, Mayor Andrea W. Oaks. So we would like to get your picture taken. So council, <laughs> tell me, absolutely. I wanted to say a couple oh, words. Oh, I, absolutely. Please. Okay, Mayor, City Council. It has been a pleasure and an honor to work for the city of Stanton for 32 years. When I started, we recorded everything manually and now you are fully automated. I loved working with my coworkers and the public. It can be trying at times, but everybody works together to get the job done. Thanks again for a wonderful adventure. Thank you. Thank Susan. you. Yes, <laughs> Let Rick get this out. Yeah, and get her, the others in there too. Yeah. There you go. Thank you. Good job. Thank you, Susan. Thank you, Susan. Thank you. I know I want to. Oh. Hey. 
We have a lot of wonderful people that are just dedicated to the betterment of the city of Stanson. Um, so thank you for um, hanging in there with us for all the different recognitions, but that's a good thing to have so many uh, dedicated, loyal, and just um, wonderful, wonderful employees and citizens of Stanton. And um, Fire Chief Garber, we didn't have a certificate for you, but we'll make sure you get a t-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> All right, the next item is item D, an introduction of the FY 2023 budget ordinance. Ms. Beauregard. Um, Mr. Phil Trey, our chief finance officer will um, preview this, give a presentation on this item. Thank you. Okay. Welcome. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of council. It's a pleasure to be back tonight. We are here to introduce the FY 2023 budget ordinance. The FY23 budget ordinance totals $142,967,876 and consists of the following. General fund appropriation, 65.2 million. Debt service, 5.4 million. CIP fund, zero. Blue Ridge Court Services, 1.3 million. Water fund, 11 million. Sewer fund, 9.9 million. Parking fund, 551,000. Stormwater Fund, 1.9 million. Environmental Fund, 4.3 million. Education Fund, 37.9 million. Cafeteria Fund, 1.9 million. Textbook Fund, 341,000. School CIP, 100,000. Phil, I'm gonna interrupt you for one second. Do we have we get slides? For uh, not for this item. I'm gonna I'm gonna speak after he speaks gotcha. about some of the thing. One thing that we heard earlier during the presentation. So Mr. Trayer can finish, and then I'll go gotcha. next. Okay, that sounds make good. A motion. Sorry, I know you were on a roll. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. This ordinance includes an environment uh, school state operator programs 3.3 million. This ordinance includes an environmental fund rate increase of 15 percent, which raises the monthly residential rate from twenty dollars and eighty eight cents per month to twenty four dollars and one cent per month for an increase of $3.13 on a monthly basis, $6.26 on a semi-monthly bill, billing, and it equates to $37.56 increase on an annual basis. This budget also includes real estate tax rates, no change, personal property tax rates, no change, water fund rates, no change, sewer fund rates, no change, parking fund rates, no change. Council's free to adjust this amendment as it sees fit. The city, manager, the city manager presentation of the FY 2023 budget occurred at this evening's work session, and additional budget work sessions are scheduled for April 7th, April 14th, April 21st, and the budget is scheduled for approval on April 28th. A properly advertised public, public hearing is set for April 14th, and the city manager recommends this ordinance be introduced as presented. Uh, let me say a few words. Okay. Um, Mr. Trayer did mention that earlier this evening we did a full out budget presentation. I would encourage you if you did not, we're not here for that because there are a lot more people here now than there were earlier to go on the website um, under the finance department and click on budget and you can see the presentations that Mr. Trayer and I both provided tonight. The one thing that I would like to reiterate, the one point I want to make is that Mr. Trayer presented a possible path for the schools to close the majority of the funding gap, which is $624,000 at the moment, without eliminating any positions or utilizing any additional fund balance. And it's a combination of revenue and expenditures. The revenue items are, number one, the Perkins Federal Grant in the amount of $68,614, Title II Federal Grant, $90,489, SOP administration, which is the state operated program fund um, for $99,773 and Medicaid for $63,200. All those total to $322,000. There's two expense items that uh, Mr. Trayer um, has proposed as well that can be reduced. The first is the VRS savings rate between the professional and non-professional position classifications. We quantify that this is to be $82,000 for trades and maintenance positions. The VRS rates for these positions are lower than what is budgeted currently. And then another item is $67,000 for transportation positions, which are not eligible for VRS. VRS. These two items total $149,000. After accounting for these adjustments, 
We believe the funding gap will be lowered from $624,000 to $152,000, which I can find tonight and balance this budget. Thank you. Mr. Traeger, did you have anything else? All right. No, ma'am. Are there any questions by council members? Yeah, I just wanted to make a point just so, I mean, everybody else out there understands. Uh, I asked Mr. Traeger, uh, there's been a lot of, you know, we've been inundated with emails. We've had people say that we're cutting the budget and we're not. Um, Phil, how much more are we actually giving the school board this year? Um, we're scheduled to give them uh, an additional $1.1 million over last year, uh, $850,000 above the 2020 high water mark. Um, if we were to close the gap, uh, that, that, that of course would be increased by an additional $150,000. And that would be the 50-50 that they're asking for plus? Um, that would have been close to the 50-50, slight, slightly above it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but but it certainly closes the gap. Okay. Are there any additional comments, questions? Okay, I would um, just simply like to remind everyone that during the work session, uh, we had the presentation of the full breakdown of the budget uh, by Ms. Beauregard and Mr. Treyer. So if you would like to um, go online to listen to it, please feel free. Um, Right now, what we are doing, we're not voting on the budget. We are simply voting on introducing an ordinance. Um, Mr. Blair, would you like to say a few words about the motion that will be made? Yes, as uh, Mr. Trayer stated, ultimately the budget process will play out for the better part of a month and the ultimate budget adoption can only come the state code mandates. There is a public hearing which occur, must occur seven days before budget adoption. That is scheduled for April the 21st, 2022, and budget adoption is scheduled for April 28th. I'm sorry, the public hearing is April 14th. There will be an additional work session April 21st, and then the uh, budget adoption is scheduled for April the 28th. So again, that April the 14th, meeting is another opportunity for citizens to speak at a public hearing about what budget priorities and allocations that they value most. Thank you. All right. And on the 14th of April, Ms. Beauregard, we will also have a joint meeting with yes, the school board and the correct. city council. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Yes. All right. Mayor Oaks. Um, yes. Uh, I just want to say thank you to Mr. Trayer for the, the work that you and your team have done, along with uh, Ms. Beauregard. Uh, I think that hearing all this information tonight is, um, is really positive, good news, um, and, and I do feel like that we are moving in the right direction and that, you know, we're going to be able to do what we need to do um, for the city and the schools. So thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Darby. All right. Any other comments? Madam Hear Mayor. Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Vice Mayor Robertson. I move to introduce the fiscal year 2023 budget ordinance for the city of Stanton and to schedule a public hearing on the proposed ordinance during council's regular meeting on April 14th, 2022. If there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor. Councillor Claffey. Be glad to second that. All right, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessiker, please call the roll. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dahl? Aye. Motion carries. All right, thank you. And thank you for all of your hard work. All right. The next item is item F, an appointment of interim city manager as representative to select. Uh, do we still have item E? Item e. Oh, I, I'm sorry. We sure do. Yeah. That's right. what you get for calling. Well, <laughs> I know. And I know. That threw me off. That threw me off. We do. We have item E. My apologies. Um, are we sure? Are you sure we don't have anyone else to recognize? <laughs> <laughs> item E, introduction of ordinance to increase environmental fund fee rates. Oh, yeah, probably. Intentionally missed that one. Sure. Joking, joking, sure. 
All right, Ms. Beauregard. Uh, for this, I'm gonna pass it along again to Mr. Trayer. Okay, Madam Mayor, members of council, it's a pleasure to be back. Tonight, we're here to discuss the proposed FY 2023 environmental fund rate increase. During FY 2020's budget process, the CFO provided council with a plan which would enable the city to continue its services, as well as to prepare for future CIP requirements at the Augusta County Regional Landfill. On slide two, we have the environmental fund rate increase plan that was first presented to council in March of 2019 as part of the 2020 budget process. At the time, the CFO's plan called for rate increases of 15% in 2020, 10% in 2021, 15% in 2022, and 10% in 2023. It was based upon this plan that the city increased its rates in 2020 and 2021 by 15 and 10% respectively. The projections in the plan provided at the time continue to prove sound, and it should enable council and citizens to have a predictable environmental fund rate in the foreseeable future without being subject to wild fluctuations. The proposed 15% rate increase in 2022 was deferred by one year, which brings us to this year's request. Slide three, cost drivers for this, for this increase are primarily the scheduled land fund phase five development, which began in FY 2022 with the design of the project for $300,000 and actual construction to occur in 2023 for 4 million. Stanton share is 20.18%, which equates to $807,000 and represents a lion's share of the projected landfill CIP obligations in 23. Other 23 requirements include miscellaneous site improvements and wetland mitigation reserves of $60,000. One other major project is listed, the relocation, the scale house, and construction of a new office, which is scheduled to begin in 2024. The expansion consists of an additional, in addition of an outbound scale, which will allow the landfill to more readily capture refuge fees. These have a combined cost of $1.6 million. Slide four, on slide four, we outline CIP heavy equipment requirements within the landfill CIP. Ongoing heavy equipment replacement cycles over the next five years include compactors, $800,000, dozers, $1 million, haul trucks, $550,000, truck loaders, $580,000, excavator, $150,000, and a tarp system for $60,000. In addition to replacing the heavy equipment at the landfill, the environmental fund also covers replacement of heavy equipment used exclusively within the city's borders. This equipment includes street sweepers, haul trucks, and compactors. Slide five summarizes the landfill's five-year CIP plan. In FY 2022, we are covering the design of cell five for $300,000. Other costs include miscellaneous site provisions, $50,000, sediment, sediment basin cleaning for $150,000, a new dozer for $400,000, a traco for $375,000, and a replacement vehicle for gas monitoring at the landfill site. As mentioned above in FY23, we had the one major project, self high development, 4 million and two minor reserves, wetland mitigation, 10,000, site work, 50,000. Total five years CIP plan for the uh, landfill equals uh, $9 million, Stanton share is 1.8 million. Slide six, we summarize the projected seat local CIP associated with the environmental fund in 23, a replacement of a 10 year 10-year-old street sweeper, 250,000. 24, replacement of a hauler, 180,000. 25, replacement of the other 10, uh, street, street sweeper, which will be 10 years old at that time, 265,000. And replacement of a hauler in 26, 195,000. Slide seven, the FY23 rate increase is projected to raise an additional $388,000 in revenue, which will allow the city to meet the CIP need to the environmental fund at both the landfill and within the city. In addition, the rate increase will allow the city to continue its current service model and improve the recycling program. Bi-monthly customer billing is proposed to increase by $3.13 per month and $37.56 annually. Slide eight discusses the impact of pushing back the increase yet another year. By forestalling it one more year, the enterprise fund would be nearly completely exhausted and the general fund could potentially be required to support the fund by the end of the fiscal year. Forestalling the increase another year will mean 
subsequent year rate increases will be impacted, disproportionately impacted, in order to compensate for the deferred expenses. FY24 rates already projected to increase by 15% would increase to 20%. 25 rates already projected to increase by 5%, projected to increase by 10%. And 26 rates already projected to increase by 0% would be projected to increase by 5%. That concludes my presentation. I'd be happy to address any questions that you have at this time. All right, Councillor Kleppe. Bill, what is the life, what is the projected life expectancy of the landfill if we go to phase five? And are there any further phases? Yeah, there's there there will be some additional phases. Um, I don't have that information off the top of my head. I apologize. I've been pretty consumed with the general fund budget, I understand. but I will get that answer for you and I can um, submit we, the answer to council. We have a long-term plan to stay at that same piece of property. Yes, sir. We do. Absolutely. Any additional questions or comments? Okay. So this is, oh, go ahead. Okay. And so if there's no additional questions or comments, um, uh, we, we do need to consider the increase in the 23, we need to, in, we need to introduce the ordinance to increase the rates. Um, so, um, let's see. Let me catch myself up here. Okay, tonight we, we do need to consider the ordinance to increase the environmental fund raised by 15%. This rate will follow the past presented to council at the FY 2020 budget process and will raise a monthly residential fee from $20.88 to 2401. This equates to an additional $3.13 per month increase or $37.56 per year. Rate increases will primarily go towards the retaining of the level of services in the scheduled CIP projects at both the Augusta Regional Landfill and the City of Stanton. Again, reiterate, for the ordinance introduction, CIP projects include ongoing heavy equipment replacement at the landfill, as well as local as landfill, as well as locally, and includes projects such as a landfill development, four million, scale house relocation and office construction, 1.65 million, heavy duty equipment procurements at the landfill, totaling $2.6 million over the next five years, multiple heavy duty equipment procurements, totaling $890 thousand dollars over the nine over the next five years the city of stan this ordinance being introduced this evening and a properly advertised public hearing is scheduled to be held on april 14 2022 budget work sessions for this item are scheduled for april 7th april 14th april 21st and the budget scheduled for adoption on april 28th 2022 the city manager has recommended the introduction of this ordinance as presented Okay. All right. You got it in there. Yes. All right. So again, this is um, being driven by the landfill um, phase five. So. Yes. Okay. Uh, good reason to recycle. Yes. All righty. Um, I think need we to need to take a vote. Yeah. I, that's accepting. what I'm getting ready to oh, do. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm, I'm sorry. getting ready to do. But before I was going to entertain a motion, I just wanted to... Um, let the public know that once again, this is uh, simply an introduction to the ordinance. We're not actually voting on uh, an increase towards the environmental fund. Just like with the uh, city budget, this is introducing the ordinance. So with that, I'll entertain a motion. Mayor Oaks. Councillor Holmes. Uh, I move to introduce an ordinance to increase the refuge and recycling fees by 15% effective July 1st, 2022, and to schedule a public hearing on the proposed ordinance during council's regular meeting on April 14th, 2022. We have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor. Councilor Claffey. I will second that. All right, we have a second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessaker, please call the roll. Mr. Claffey. Aye. Ms. Dull. Aye. Ms. Darby. Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. All right, now on to item F, which I guess I was excited to get to it because it gives um, our interim city manager more work. <laughs> item F is an appointment of interim city manager as representative to select public bodies in authorization for interim city manager to designate an alternate representative to select public bodies. 
Ms. Beauregard. Um, Mr. John Blair, our city attorney, will um, lead us through this item. All right. Mr. Blair, welcome. Good evening, Mayor Oaks and Council. Uh, the city manager represents the city on a number of regional policy boards. Um, the council does need to confirm these appointments of your interim city manager to these regional policymaking boards. Uh, the resolution before you also, there are three of these regional boards that allow an alternate to the city manager to represent the city during meetings when the city manager is not available. And those are the Bright Transit Advisory Committee, the Stanton Augusta Waynesboro Metropolitan Planning Organization, as well as the Middle River Regional Jail Authority. So the city manager pursuant to these resolutions will be appointed to six bodies and the three bodies that I named, the interim city manager will have the authority to appoint an alternate to serve in her stead if she's unable to uh, attend those bodies' meetings. Any questions? So, Ms. Beauregard, will you make that decision during the meeting if someone gets up to go to the bathroom <laughs> to appoint them? <laughs> sure. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Mr. Blair. All right. Mayor Oaks. Councillor Darby. I move to appoint interim city manager Leslie Beauregard as representative of the city to the policy board of the following regional agencies, Bright Transit Advisory Committee, the Middle River Regional Jail Board, the Stanton Augusta Waynesboro Metropolitan Planning Organization, the Valley Alcohol Safety Action Program, the Shenandoah Valley Juvenile Detention Center Commission, and the Augusta County Landfill Land Trust. All right, we have a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Mayor, Mayor Oaks, I'll second that. Right. Councilor Holmes is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessiker, please call the roll. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Motion carries. All right. Thank you. All right, the next item is item G, a discussion and consideration of Personal policy manual update, holidays, and holiday pay. Ms. Beauregard. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John Venn, our Chief Human Resources Officer, will um, handle this item for us. Thank you, Mayor Oaks, Welcome. City Council members. Uh, currently, the City of Stanton observes 10 paid holidays annually, plus other holidays as designated by City Council. In February of 2021, City Council approved the FY22 holiday schedule, which included adding adding Monday, June 20th, 2022, as an additional holiday in celebration of Juneteenth Day. At that time, the briefing stated that Juneteenth Day would be added to the policy 5.3 at a later date, which is today. Uh, since the approval of the FY22 holiday schedule, othering, other neighboring localities have added additional paid holidays to their holiday schedule as a means to address employee retention and engagement. Currently, the city of Waynesboro has 14 paid holidays, Rockingham County has 14.5 paid holidays, and the city of Harrisonburg has 13 paid holidays. We are proposing and is being recommended by the interim city manager that city council approve an update to policy 5.3 holidays, holiday pay with the addition of Juneteenth Day, Veterans Day, and one additional personal holiday as paid holidays for a total of 13 paid holidays. And with that, I would be glad to answer any questions you may have. Are there any questions about council members? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Madam Mayor. Vice Mayor Robertson. I move the city council approve the proposed revisions to policy 5.3 holidays and holiday pay of the city of Stanton personnel policy manual and adopt the revised policy as presented. There's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Mayor no. Oaks, I second that. All right. Councillor Darby has second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessiker, please call the roll. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. 
Motion carries. Thank you. The next item is item H, a discussion and consideration of FY 2023 holiday schedule. Ms. Beauregard. Uh, Mr. John Finn will once again take care of this item for us. All right. Well, so welcome back. So with, with your adoption of the revised holiday policy, the city of Stanton will now observe 13 paid holidays annually in FY 23, plus other holidays as designated by city council. The holiday schedule is planned in advance to allow employees and departments time to plan and coordinate operations. It is important to note that the schedule to work that, excuse me, that scheduled to work essential services on a holiday are provided an alternative holiday and that in case of emergency employees called into work during a holiday are paid for time work and receive an alternate holiday for those folks who cannot observe those paid holidays. We are proposing and is being recommended by the interim city manager that city council approve the FY23 holiday schedule as presented and observe the following 13 paid holidays plus the one additional paid holiday granted by city council for a total of 14 paid holidays in FY23. And I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have about that. All right. Any questions by council members? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion. Oops. Councilor Holmes. I move to adopt the fiscal year 2023 holiday schedule as presented. All right, there's a motion on the floor. Is there a second? Madam Mayor, I'll second that. Councilor Claffey is second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, Mr. Kessiker, please call the roll. Mr. Holmes? Aye. Ms. Dull? Aye. Mayor Oaks? Aye. Vice Mayor Robertson? Aye. Ms. Darby? Aye. Mr. Claffey? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. And I'll get that out to city staff tomorrow. I'm sure they will be happy to see the, the holiday schedule in FY23. Thank, Thank you, you, Mr. Ben. I just wish I got some of those holidays. I know, that. right? <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, the next item is item I, a discussion of cancellation of summer city council meetings. Ms. Beauregard. So I thought since we were talking about holidays, maybe we should talk about this as well. Yeah, there you go, Mr. Um, so in prior years, city council has canceled one or more meetings during the summer months. And if you remember last year in 2021, you all canceled the July 8th meeting. Um, that would usually, usually, I put that in quotes, we have less business to attend to and that permits staff to also take some time off and schedule some vacations and other activities. As I mentioned, it's typically been a meeting in July and or August. Um, I've, the per dates have been done by an informal poll of city council. And if a business item does come up during this time period, I would alert council and we could schedule a special meeting if we had to, to address that issue. So tonight there's no action to be taken on your part, but I would just like to hear a discussion about whether you, there would be an interest in polling council to whether we would like to cancel one meeting, two meetings, just to get a, for, a gut check on where you all um, would be with that discussion. So I'll start. All right, so you mean like a meeting in July and a meeting in August? Or, um, sure, both I mean, last one? year last year you all just canceled the July meeting. The year before, I don't think any of the meetings were canceled. So it's it's been, sometimes it's happened, sometimes it hasn't happened. But um, if council were, were interested, we could then poll council. I could have Mr. Kesker poll council and we could okay. find the most appropriate date or dates if it's more than one. All right, Mr. Holmes, would you like to start this sure. conversation? I, I would like the week of the, if we could take the, the first week in July or the, or the first 14th. 14th. 14th, yes. And then, um, and I'd be, be honest with you, I got enough work at work to keep me busy. So if you could do another one in August, that'd be fine. <laughs> if not, then I'll be here. Any other thoughts by council members? July 14th is great for me. It's fine. Yeah, that's fine. I more so just for staff to give them a chance to do. Yeah, correct. Absolutely. Okay, Miss Beauregard, if um, staff could look into the 14th of July and the potential of August. Okay. So. Would you? I could send out a poll about August and see how the responses come back. How about that? Sounds good. Okay. Sounds good. That would be great. Thank you. Right. The next item is matters from the interim city manager. I'm here. Miss okay. Beauregard. Thank you. I have several items to talk about tonight. Um, the first one is um, there's a paper over on the table that's our um, monthly activity report. It now includes a highlight section on the first couple of pages of the report and also added as a link on the top um, 
right of the city's homepage that goes directly to the activity report if you're on our website. Um, this makes it more visible and accessible to community members. This is the first time we've tried something like this. So if you have any feedback, um, please contact Michelle Bixler. You can find her email on the city manager's website, I think. So um, she's the person you want to talk to if you have any feedback. But we encourage everybody to look at our monthly report. And if, they, if you like the changes or don't like the changes, please let us know. Um, the second item I have is very exciting. The city of Stanton was notified last week that it has been awarded an industrial revitalization fund planning grant for $100,000 through the Virginia Department of Housing and Community Development to support the Arcadia project. I actually announced the application for this grant not that long ago. Uh, the grant will be used to develop construction documents and create financial and capital development plans. And once operational, the buildings will be transformed into a cultural center. Located on East Beverly Street, the mixed use facility will feature a movie theater and event space to host conferences, events in performing arts, digital media classrooms, and a small specialty food cafe. This project seeks to fill an untapped need in the community by delivering creative, educational, and enrichment resources for Stanton community members, including underserved young adults, minority, and youth groups. The third item I'd like to announce is also very exciting. Central Avenue is open to two-way traffic yeah. north of Frederick. Yay! <laughs> This project's finished ahead of schedule. And on Friday, a week from tomorrow at 10 a.m. on April 1st, it's not an April Fool's joke, I promise you, <laughs> there will be an official ribbon cutting to celebrate the completion of Central Avenue's streetscape improvement project. Everybody's invited, of course. Next, another exciting thing, and this is also an April Fool's, Shop and Dine Out in downtown returns next Friday. Oh, yeah, I've got some yays out there. Great. Um, the next item, tourism and other city staff had a kickoff meeting with our new web designer and marketing agency, and we expect a tourism website by August slash September. So that'll be a great update to that website. Visit Stanton.com. The next item is the public outreach portion of the update to the entrance corridor guidelines will be starting next week. Uh, Fraser will be conducting in-person interviews with select property and business owners in each of the corridors over the next few weeks. A survey will be available online on, and on paper starting early next week and mark your calendars for a public workshop on Wednesday, April 6th, 7 p.m. here in City Hall. We'll be sending out promotions about that event in the next week as well. Finally, Finally, I have some news from the Shenandoah Valley Animal Shelter Owners Meeting. The application for the director position has closed and we will start to review those soon and schedule interviews. And the new commercial dishwasher will be installed next Tuesday, March 29th. Very good. Yeah, that is it. All right. <laughs> I think we get some claps out of that one. Oh, that's and that exciting. is my report for tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, the next item is matters from the public. Um, I did just want to say um, thank you for everyone coming out tonight. Uh, this, is, uh, this is wonderful. I mean, this is democracy at its best. Um, we um, will be here for as long as it takes to listen to every single person that would like to speak. Uh, we have received over 140 emails from um, the citizens. If you send an email, you can still speak at the podium um, or call in. So we are very delighted to have you here and we're more than happy to listen to your concerns. So. This part of City Council's agenda is entitled Matters from the Public. It is a time that Council sets aside to hear from citizens and others about a wide variety of subjects. A copy of the Stanton City Council's Matters from the Public Rules is available in paper form at the clerk's desk and online on the City of Stanton's webpage. You are asked to familiarize yourself with those rules before commenting. Please come to the podium or begin your call. Identify yourself and complete your remarks within five minutes. So we're going to start with the um, audience first, and then we'll um, go to the folks that have their hands raised in the Zoom, and we'll just keep alternating. So again, you can um, come to the podium, um, state your name, your address, and you have five minutes to speak. All right. With that, Matters from the Public is now open. Um, if you would like to come to the podium. Hi, welcome. Hi, um, my name is Jordan Zipser. I live on College Circle here in Stanton. And um, just for reference, my pronouns are they, them. Thank you. Um, so I actually listened to the budget meeting that was held at five o'clock this evening. 
Um, and during that meeting, there were quite a few num uh, budget numbers that were listed. Um, even city council members commented that it was a lot of numbers to digest in a short period of time. Um, I fully agree with that sentiment, especially given that there, were no, there was no actual context provided for the budget numbers that were shared. Um, that said, the conclusion that I reached after hearing the budget breakdown was that the schools were basically being attacked for how they chose to spend their money. Um, it's kind of funny, given that as far as I can tell, the school relies on numerous fundraisers throughout the year um, and that they use reserves and grants to avoid making any cuts. As a parent of neurodivergent children who are in need of a different kind of support, I find it difficult to argue with the choice to avoid making cuts to an already taxed school system. Over the years, arts programs have been slashed, support for children with learning disabilities has been decreased, and the people that are gonna be impa impacted by further cuts are the children in most in need. Those who have learning disabilities are food insecure, have physical disabilities, et cetera. Parents of transgender children may also need to make a choice at some point between education and safety. Unfortunately, the county is not particularly friendly. Stanton is kind of the safe haven here. You're our little blue bastion. And we wanna keep it that way. Um, you know, and basically you, you wanna know where people's values lie, just follow the money. City council has very clearly saying that it's more important to spend money on expanding the jail system than it is in equitably investing in the future of our children and our community. Thank you. Do you have them on? Caller, you may begin. Caller? Kylie, can you tell if they're muted? Okay. Kali, are they? Hello, am I the caller? Yes, you have Okay, five I wasn't sure which name. Um, hi, my name is Luella Hill. I'm a parent of kids in Stanton City Schools. I sat in or I listened in on the work meeting at five and um, Mr. Treyer, you did a lot of work. That was a lot of numbers that you gave us. But one of the things that I definitely was confused about was you were talking about fiscal year 2021 and the increases and explaining those increases. And I'm pretty sure I was getting confused between capital funds and operating funds. And I, I believe you were referring to a lot of capital funds, which were in fact operating funds. So as we continue to discuss the budget, I, I would really um, appreciate help clarifying what are capital funds and what are operating funds. But Here's my statement in brief. Um, I don't want Stanton City School teachers to leave us. And if they can get a higher pay in a nearby school outside of our district, they're gonna go. So we have to fully fund our schools. In the year 2021, the fiscal year, we, we cut the budget. We took away so much of the school's budget and we never restored it. And this fiscal year 2023 is our opportunity to return to dignified funding for our public schools. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome. Pamela Mason Wagner. I live on North Coulter Street in Stanton, and I'm here to speak about why I believe we should fully fund our public schools here in Stanton. I'm sure many of us watch Judge Ketanji Brown Jackson speak about her insecurity during her freshman year at Yale given that she had not gone to a prep school, but attended public schools in Florida. I too found myself on an Ivy League campus after attending a public school in California. I mention it because every student in Stanton City Schools should believe that if they work hard enough and dedicate themselves to furthering their education, they too can go to any college in America. But affording our young people a pathway to college is only one of many reasons we should fully fund our public schools here in Stanton. We also want to build an educated workforce that can read and write and think critically so we can attract good businesses to our area. But most importantly, we should want to prepare our young people for democratic citizenship. 
This was a major reason for the creation of public schools. The founding fathers maintained that the success of the fragile American democracy would depend on the competency of its citizens. They believed strongly that preserving democracy would require an educated populace that could understand political and social issues and would participate in civic life, as we see this evening. In order to vote wisely, to protect their own rights and freedoms, and resist tyrants and demagogues, we need to educate our youth to think critically, reason well, and formulate sound, well-thought-out opinions. I'm sure each of you on the council understands the value of these qualities. Our schools are the key to our future ability to meet future challenges, the ones we know about and the ones that have not yet arisen. Thank you for doing the right thing, as I know you will, and fully funding our schools. Thank you. Right. Do we have anyone with their hand raised? Okay, caller, you may begin. Caller, if you can state your name, you have five minutes to speak. Tally, are there? I'm not unmuting. Okay, we'll come back to him. All right. Welcome. Hi, can you hear me? Uh, oh, if you can hang on one second. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, go I'm ahead sorry. and begin. Maybe just note that like it's not popping up for people to unmute right away. It takes a little while. Um, my name is Allison Profeta. I live in Stanton and I'm calling in to ask for some clarity on a couple of things. Your path to a balanced budget. Can you clarify for the public how much of that includes federal funds to our schools that are already allocated to required expenses and cannot be used for things like salaries? Can you clarify what you mean when you say that you're backing out the use of the reserves and why you do that? Um, when you talk about the additional two and a half million dollars the schools are going to request for their maintenance needs, I think it's irresponsible of you to not also provide context for that. Stanton City Schools made it clear that their maintenance facilities can no longer be housed at Shelburne, both because of needed classroom space and because of the associated fumes and health risks. Vice Mayor Robertson had a minor hissy fit about the very idea that our schools were housing it there. I remember that meeting clearly. Um, they found a building out at Stanton Crossing that met jointly with you and with the Economic Development Authority. And those three groups collectively agreed that they would find another option. You cannot now rake them over the coals for needing additional funding in order to hold up their side of that agreement. Slide after slide tonight in your presentation showed that department after department is getting increased, but not our schools. I don't think anyone begrudges anyone in any department getting increased pay, but I do think that above and beyond financial obligations, you also have a moral obligation to fund our schools so that students and staff can all thrive and not just survive. Can you share with the public what your current bond rating is and what you believe it would drop to if you took $600,000 from your reserves and gave it to the schools? Because the city's estimated fund balance at the start of fiscal year 2021 was 12.9 million. At the start of fiscal year 2022, it rose to $17.6 million. What are the consequences that you're worried about if those reserves went from $17.6 million to $17 million. There was a lot of talk in your presentation about what the schools need to do with their budget and not enough talk about why it is that their funding was not made whole. We understand cuts being made during an unprecedented pandemic. We cannot understand why when revenues increased more than projected, our schools were not made whole and why you are continuing to push back against fully funding them. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone have their hand raised? Does anyone have their hand raised? No? Okay. All right. Welcome. Thank you. My name is Thomas Wagner. My, my wife spoke previously, and I usually let her speak for me, but I wanted to say a couple of things tonight. Um, I was glad to see the proclamation for um, Miss Senior America Day. I'm a big fan of seniors. I am one. <laughs> um, and I heard one phrase jumped out at me. It said, they are our greatest resource. And, and I think they are a great resource. I, I know all of my friends are in that demographic and they do a lot of things to in, 
increase the viability of business and culture in, in Stanton. But I think our greatest um, resource are our children. Uh, because I'm in the last quarter of the game and they're in the first quarter of the game. And, and they are our future and their education is paramount. And to do things that will reduce that, um, the value of that and the, and the efficiency of that and, the, and how good an education they receive is a mistake. I, I've talked to a number of you, not all of you, but on, I've had occasion to talk to uh, Council Member Claffey. And I, I actually believe that city council has the, the, the good of this community in mind. I don't always agree with everything you do, but uh, I believe in your goodwill. Um, I'm, a, I'm a great, great fan of the game of golf, but I would find it hard to believe that anybody in this room or anybody on the council would think that the golf carts that we have currently paid for are more important than the education of our children. All right, thank you for waiting. Um, caller, you may begin. Are they in the room? Okay. Caller, you may begin. Okay. We'll go ahead and move on. Maybe give him another second because Ms. Perfetta said it takes a second. Caller, can you hear us? Mr. Kessaker, we're going to move on. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Uh, my name is Dr. Mary Miller. I live at 471 Albemarle Avenue, and uh, we're here to talk about education tonight. And uh, Obviously, I've been uh, very gifted in what I've been given as far as my education. But um, what I came to talk about was um, thinking and believing. Um, so um, I want to ask questions and have everyone here think about how they think. So um, where did your thinking come from? Where did it derive from? How, how did you think, how did that come about? Um, did it come from your parents? If it came from your parents, did it come from one parent more than the other parent? Um, what about other adults, people that were maybe friends of your parents? Um, who taught you what to believe? So some people here tonight believe in education. Maybe other people don't, but we all have beliefs. Where did they come from? Um, and as you were getting your beliefs and you were being taught what to believe, what happened when you asked questions? Because, you know, kids in school ask questions. Um, what were you taught about people who thought or believed differently than you believed? What, what about them? Because while Stanton seems to be not very diverse, um, certainly the children from our schools are gonna go out into a very diverse world. Um, also, what were you taught about yourself? And how do you see yourself now? And by that, how do you see yourself, then how do you judge others? What's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad? Um, do you remember any of your teachers? What did they teach you? And what influence did they have on your development? How many of them were mentors and how many do you remember and how many helped them to develop your character? How many of their ideas do you still follow? And where do you get your news and information? Who's your TV station? Who's your radio station? What about social media? Because that influences what you think 
and what you believe. Um, what are your artistic, cultural resources for learning, for variety and for enjoyment? Um, Stanton is pretty well known for um, culture and art and music, and I certainly saw it last night with uh, Caravansary. Um, do you discuss issues at your dinner table? You discuss in them openly and critically, or have you always been told what's right, what's wrong, what's good, what's bad? And are you always right? Are you always right? As what, is your thinking correct? Can you listen to someone who disagrees with you? Can you look in their eyes and see how they feel? Feel some empathy for them. And when somebody disagrees with you, what emotions are triggered? We certainly saw emotions being triggered um, in the U.S. Senate, in the US Senate uh, during the confirmation hearings. Um, so our thinking and our power gives it or restricts our thinking, our emotions, our values, our beliefs, and our children. And what should we give them? What should we give our children? Should we allow them to be free? free to be themselves, or should we mold them to be what we think they should be, what we believe they should be, what we want them to be? And I think that this uh, is really uh, dependent on how much freedom and how much we value our school system here in Stanton. Um, at this time, for at budget time, we have the opportunity to show our children how precious they are by investing in their education. What could be more important than giving them the opportunity to learn, have good educated mentors and more adults who care about them? So please think and choose a white path, wise path. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hey, I'm Renee Clark with Cat's Cradle again. Um, I want to thank you guys for getting the position for the executive director for Shenandoah Valley Animal Services Center. And I understand that's being, um, you know, currently being filled. Really appreciate that greatly. Also, the dishwasher is fantastic. That's great. Um, just wanted to let you guys know they recently did have an owner's mean, meeting that um, many of us attended, and that was um, very productive. I know they talked about revising the MOU uh, three, for all three localities. And um, there were some different ideas thrown out about, you know, how the voting should go, should it be unanimous or not unanimous. But the one thing we just want to uh, make sure you guys are looking at when you're uh, revising that is just some type of um, goals for, you know, maintaining the save rate and also maintaining the current veterinary care, if that's possible. Um, even if the localities do disagree on some things, you know, that would be great that I think all of y'all, you know, are in support of that. And that would be great if we could do that. Um, I also wanted to say, I looked at this activity report highlights that's produced. This is great. Um, and it would be interesting if maybe something like this could be produced for the owner's meeting for the Shando Valley Animal Services Center. Um, I don't know if that's possible, but I know, um, we're having also, it'd be great if there could be standard meeting dates so people could get to those meetings because they hold them during the day. And so people have to take off work for that. So I don't know if the date has been set for the next meeting yet, but if they could be kind of standardized it would help a lot of people get involved. Um, I know that there was some talk about the proposed budget for the Shenandoah Valley Animal Services Center. Um, we didn't see it at the meeting because I think they were still working on that. It'd be great if you know some people could maybe take a look at that closer. But one thing that was talked about was the um, apparently the new budget would only have about 5% for veterinary care for animals, uh, which to me, that seems like a very low percentage. Um, I believe that's what the percentage might have been in the year prior also. I think it might have been actually percentage wise a little bit higher and just only by a tiny bit. Um, so if that could be looked at closely, um, just know that veterinary care is not only your contract veterinarian, uh, which the amount seemed to match up with that, but I think it's also when they would need to go out for, you know, something that's wrong with them when they, you know, are in the shelter. 
Uh, but another more important thing too is also uh, spay and neuter. We wanna make sure all those animals stay spayed and neutered, they're spayed and neutered before they're adopted. So I would just say that 5% of even, you know, it's a decent budget increase that you guys are looking at, but um, that veterinary thing was just one thing that they mentioned. Again, would love to see the whole budget to be able to know what was going on there. Um, also wanted to give a thanks to Stanton Animal Patrol officers. Uh, there was a street in Stanton recently where they have a, um, a cat issue, a lot of cats. And um, we are working with them to try to get everybody who wants their cat spayed and neutered and any free roaming cats um, altered, uh, spayed or neutered, so they won't be a continuing problem. So a special thanks to both you guys, animal control officers, for um, letting us get in there and talk to people and getting that done. So that's all I have. Thank you. Oh, I do have one more thing, sorry. The advisory committee, um, I haven't heard anything on that recently, and I know there's been a lot of action made. Um, you know, trying to look at MOUs, trying to look at, you know, hiring, trying to look at budgets. And so um, I just would like to say again, heard a lot of good things about other advisory committees going on. And I hope you guys uh, like to know what that progress is at some point and hope we're, hopefully we're working on that. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Kesticker. Right. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor Oaks and City Council members. I'm Pam Snyder and I live in the city of Stanton. I grew up here and I was privileged to uh, be taught in the Stanton school systems along with my four grown daughters. I also have several grandchildren who have benefited from Stanton City School System. And I also have great grandchildren now that are starting to uh, enter. So I come as a concerned parent, uh, as an engaged citizen and also a human resources professional um, I am in support of quality education, especially in the city of Stanton. And I know that that is dependent on our ability to attract and retain qualified teachers. In order to do that, we have to provide competitive salaries. We need to provide excellent benefits and we need to show support from our Stanton school board and our city council. Full funding to meet the educational needs of a quality school system is what we need, not more of a watered down contribution to the budget. As an HR professional, I do understand the challenges of the current, with the current staffing situation. There's evidence that more and more employers are reaching out and recruiting teachers. Teachers are a great source of talent and businesses see them as excellent communicators, they are teammates, but they're also excellent independent thinkers and communicators and can work well independently. Statistics now show that more than a half of the teachers say they're planning to leave the profession earlier than they had originally planned to. Are we poised for this? Because this will be a great loss to our educational system. Thus the importance and my stressing the point that we need and I would hope want to be a premier educational system in Stanton. We should desire and strive to provide a premier educational system for our city, for our children, and not be the city who lags behind our surrounding school systems. Every day I see posts from families that are exploring the possibility of moving into the area and living in Stanton. One of the things that they want to know is, do we have a quality educational system and do we have full support of that system by our elected city officials? Every child in Stanton deserves a quality education and a city government that values education. This is a reminder that a good education establishes a strong foundation for our children and our youth and ultimately helps build future self-sustaining citizens for Stanton. But this does take full funding of our school system and the program needs. Education should be a top priority as it truly affects the future generations of Stanton and our ability to grow and thrive as a community. We have the opportunity here tonight to share our voices and our support of the Stanton School System. City Council has the ability to approve the necessary funding for Premier Educational System. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi. My name is Bridget Kane and I live on Valley View Drive. I am a 10th grade student at Stanton High School. Recently, it was brought to my attention that the Stanton City Council has proposed a budget for the city in which over $600,000 will be withheld from schools out of the requested amount this year. 
even after the council dramatically cut the budget in 2021 by almost $2 million. This leaves our education budget below other school districts in Virginia of a comparable size. For example, in the proposed budget of Colonial Heights City for 2023, the school system will receive just over 50% of the total city budget compared to the less than 25% of the budget that Stanton City Schools will receive, despite Colonial Heights only having 49 more students. In Goochland County, the proposed school budget is $25.5 million, despite it having 141 less students than Stanton City Schools. Along with the cut budget, Stanton City Schools has seen an exodus of teachers. Last month, my trigonometry teacher and the outdoor track coach, Coach Vaughn, left teaching for the private sector. Recently, I learned of the planned departure and transfer of several students. I mean, teachers. <laughs> Mrs. Swartzel, who teaches mass communications and creative writing, a special education teacher, and Mrs. Fix, the biology teacher. Earlier this week, I talked to a teacher who said that Stanton has historically underpaid teachers and underfunded its school system. After the Great Recession in 2009, their salary was frozen for around five years, and they are afraid this could happen again. Many teachers I've spoken with have expressed concern that the school week will be shortened to four days so athletics and fine arts aren't cut. I am only 15 years old and cannot vote but my parents and parents of children in this school district are eligible to vote. These members of the community are watching the decisions you make on this budget because it affects their children. Your decision may influence their vote when members of this council run for re-election. I've not talked to a single parent, teacher, or student that is satisfied with the proposed budget. I'm sure you've seen signs around Stanton in support of fully funding schools and businesses in yards, as well as in this room. Additionally, there is a petition which as of this evening had over 1300 signatures and counting to fully fund Stanton city schools. The city of Stanton received millions of taxpayer dollars in revenue this past year and has an obligation to fund the community of the future. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, tough five minutes to follow. That was pretty good. Um, good evening, everybody. My name is Carly Miller. I live on Morris Mill Road. I'm a registered behavioral technician and also an instructional aide at Ware Elementary. To say I have a passion for the special ed community is the understatement of a lifetime. Um, I had my first interactions with an intellectually disabled peer when I was in kindergarten. She transferred to my school mid-year out, out of nowhere. Uh, the current group of friends I had at the time didn't want to talk to her because she looked weird and she talked kind of funny. And um, needless to say, I lost a couple of friends that day, but what I gained was something invaluable. The impact that she left on me um, stuck strong, and I think about her even to this day. I'm one of the very few lucky adults who can say I am doing what I love to do. Um, I've been working in the SPED field since high school, and even before that, if you count volunteering with Special Olympics. Um, I've firsthand experienced seeing the growth and the gains that can be achieved with the right setting with a consistent, strong, select group of staff members. These results of seeing growth in students happen when you can build a positive team of equally compassionate and caring employees that return year after year. Uh, this job is not easy. In fact, the burnout rate, especially in the SPED department, is amongst some of the highest, uh, not to mention the turnover rates being high and constant short staffing that we have to deal with. It takes a very specific person to walk into a classroom every day knowing that their job duties include being bit, scratched, hit, spit on, punched, kicked, having to change feeding tubes, having to change diapers of 10-year-olds, and Speaking about short staffing, sometimes changing a number two can take three adults. Uh, some days we go home with little or nothing left for our own families and our own kids, but we come back every single day with smiles on our face, with a good morning greeting to our kids as we get them off the bus so they can start their day at school. It's very important for them to have a constant familiar face that they see every day and know that they feel safe, loved, and valued at school. 
to say that we do this job for the money is not true because we all know we can go get a job at most convenience stores that pay more. This fragile population needs consistent groups of people to properly engage and enrich their education, helping them become the most independent citizens that they can be. Having the budget to create extra positions for more staff and creating the opportunity to provide better care and services to Stanton City students with special needs and accommodations is too important to not be paying attention to. Having raises that we can count on enables us to combat the growing cost of living. It allows us to continue utilizing local businesses for our purchases which in return boosts our economy and strengthens community bonds. Having raises helps us fight the insane gas prices that a lot of us are so happy with. Uh, there's a lot of us who commute because we love where we work and we're dedicated to this community. Um, knowing that we can use our yearly bonuses to reinvest in our classrooms by purchasing something special for the classroom, games for the kids to play. We all, anybody who works in the school district knows that wipies and goldfish are their own currency. So a lot of that stuff comes out of our own pockets. Uh, I'm advocating for all those who can't for themselves. And I'm saying that if we have humans are not willing to provide whatever support is needed for our children, then we've failed as humans. The farmer is only worth the seeds he sows and approving this budget will encourage growth in its fullest potential for our kids. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Welcome. Uh, good evening, Mayor Oaks and members of City Council. Um, my name is Billy Brown. I live on Middlebrook Road. Uh, I have the distinct honor of being the principal at Ware Elementary School. Um, <laughs> Uh, for 15 years, I've dedicated a large part of my heart uh, to the students and families of this city. Day in and day out, I get to walk into a building where 60 faculty and staff members carry out that same dedication by putting the future of this city first. At the expenditure of their own time and or safety, I've seen Mr. Montague prioritize home visits during the pandemic. Mrs. Burby's ride the bus home with an upset student. Mrs. Lynn Harris, as you referred to, Mayor Oaks, um, initiate the pen pal program. Mm -hmm. Coach T going to students extracurricular events to support them. Mrs. McDowell help families navigate loss. Mrs. Moore using her own time to work with students on homebound. Ms. Rodzinka who helped co-found the Firefighters for Literacy program uh, and countless other acts of love for our children, uh, the children of this city. We've never stopped working since March, thir March 13th of 2020. These loving actions happen not only at Ware but also at Dixon, Bessie, McSwain, Shelburne and Stanton High School. Like many of the other educators that are here tonight, I cannot in good conscience continue to walk into a building each day and face the students and my colleagues without knowing that I've done everything I can in my power to advocate that our students get what they are entitled to and deserving of. Our school division has continued to focus on education uh, of the whole child, socially, emotionally, and academically, and we've done it with decreasing support from this city. It has become more and more difficult to provide the high level of support that is needed for this community when we have to continue to prioritize basic needs as a lack of appropriate funding. We will continue to see good educators leave this division because despite the supportive efforts of administration, purposeful vision of our central office staff and the continued commitment of our fantastic school board, this city continues to underfund the very foundation that our community is built upon. Over the past several years, I've witnessed our phenomenal school division become an afterthought when this city plans its budget and overall vision. This is reflected in the Stanton plan that this very council created this summer, which completely excludes schools from its vision and core values, with the small exception of making right on an agreement to find us a maintenance facility. How can we possibly hope to have a strong city when we don't have any concept or understanding of what a pivotal part our schools play in it? How can city council members pretend to know what schools really need when they're rarely, if ever, in the buildings? And I do thank those of you that show up. I implore you to not only make this essential decision to fully fund our schools for next year by agreeing to this budget that reflects the most basic levels of need at making up the $600,000 difference that we're talking about, but to fully restore the $1.8 million that was cut in 21. I can't help... I can't help but think that the 10.5 million in additional revenue can't be used in some way to help close that gap. 
I end tonight by asking you uh, to enter next year, coming to the table with an honest focus on how to make the students, families, and educators of this wonderful city a priority because they very much deserve to be a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, Mr. Foster. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Albino Albert Foster. I'm not from around here, but I've lived in this area for about 40 years. Many years ago, I opened up two Blue Ribbon High Schools in New Jersey. Their salaries at that time were higher than your pleasant salaries. Now, how many of you have perseverance, persistence, and patience? I think all of you should have that above everything else. They are not paying you enough money. If you have to go on strike, go on strike. Do whatever you have to do in order to bring yourself up to a certain level. You can't live on some of the salaries that some of you get. You just can't. And the council here is very sympathetic, but they haven't done anything for you. Everything that you get depends upon real estate. If the real estate goes up by 26%, did your salary go up by 26%? Not even close to it. It should have. There are many wealthy people in this city whose real estate has not gone up at all. And some of them have gone down by 10,000, $15,000, $20,000. It shouldn't be that way. I'm not against increases in assessments. I'm not against you getting increases in salary because you deserve it without a question of a doubt. You're taking their children who sometimes are very difficult to handle and put up with them. They can't handle them, so they send them to you. And for that, you should be well paid. The thing about it is you need to do the right thing and they need to do the right thing. You have to have integrity, not honesty, but integrity. Know the difference between what's right and what's wrong and make sure that people do the right thing. I noticed back there, there are two people that were wearing kindness t-shirts. I wonder, what happened to the kindness t-shirts? I know you all are very concerned about teachers. I know that. And I know you mean well, but meaning well and not doing well are two different things. And I'm asking you, years ago, I substituted in Stanton High School and I got, what was it, $24 for one day of substituting. 24 stinking dollars and they took out taxes from it. <laughs> you have to change things. You have to start figuring out where your priorities are. And teaching and teachers don't get enough money. I started teaching because I loved children. I enjoyed children. And I enjoyed youngsters and so forth and so on. I enjoyed coaching and so all of those things. And I, like I said, these two Blue Ruben High Schools, the people had plenty of money, but they weren't being assessed properly. And that's where the problem begins. And you have to take the bull by the horns and start to change some things and make it for the better of the people, especially teachers. When I first started teaching, it was $2,200 a year. Can you imagine $2,200 a year back in 1955, 54? No, I can't. And so this is what you have to do. Don't get them to the stage where they have to go out and pick it to get what is rightfully theirs. Do the right thing. Know the difference between what's right and what's wrong and do the right thing. If you have to increase the assessments of the wealthy, 
fine. But right now, too many of the wealthy are riding on the backs of those who can ill afford it. How can anybody, how can these people even think about sending their children to college with the kind of salaries that they make? They can't. Well, you will have a good day and you have a lot to think about. Thank you, Mr. Foster. Caller, can you hear us? You may begin. Are they muted? Okay. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is Yvonne Wilson. I live in uh, 2017 First Street. And I have to say that this, what's going on right here, right now, is the most beautiful thing I am seeing. Everybody's coming up and accepting and listening to diverse thoughts. I don't think there's anyone in this room or who is here under the sound of my voice that doesn't care about the future of our children and our education. And it's beautiful to see that everyone here is putting their children as priority. And they do say that, you know, it takes a village to raise a child. But the flip side of that is if the village is corrupt, your children can also become that way. Education is important. I grew up in a public school system myself when I grew up in Maryland. And one of the, I actually went to a blue ribbon school. And one of the biggest things that was important in our school was civil discourse, teaching children how to speak and stick up for what they believe in and for what they are entitled to. Even thoughts in which other people do not agree. I do believe that the council has the right intentions. I believe every last one of you in this room have the right intention. The only thing that I would caution is Bill, your children up. Don't cause them to be martyrs. And the reason why I say that is because a lot of us, myself included, we tend to put out our, our own ideals, our own strong biases in our children to see a change that we want to make. What we need to do is to teach our children how to make that change. And this right here, what you all are doing in this room tonight, is definitely on the right path of doing that. Another flip side of support for teachers is not just money. There needs to be psychological and emotional support for the teachers. Because as the gentleman said before, and as the teacher that said before him, they give their all and they have nothing left when they leave. So we also have to be a village for the teachers. We have to be a village for the educators. We have to be a village for the school board because when one cog doesn't work, the whole machine falls apart. I'm just very happy that when I start running for city council that I see the citizenry engaging in civil discourse and expressing how important children are to them, how the education system is to them, how important it is to mold the future for our children to be productive, to have a safe place in this world, to have a safe place in their environment, and to have the freedom to be themselves. So let's just keep this going. No more arguments about who cares and who doesn't care because it's not about that. At the end of the day, what are we going to do right by our children? Thank you.
Welcome. Thank you. Emily Sproul, North Madison Street, Stanton. Um, thank you, Ms. Wilson, and, and thank you to all of the speakers who took the time to really prepare remarks for tonight, do their homework, figure it out. I can't say that I was one of them at this time. Things have been a little busy. I came tonight mostly to take up space, to show up, um, but as usual, I can't keep my mouth shut. Um, and my daughter said, mom, don't get up there and be angry. And I said, all right, all right, all right, all right. So I'm not angry, I'm just disappointed. Fourth graders do ask difficult questions, I should know. I taught fourth grade in Stanton City Schools many a year ago before I left teaching to raise my own children. One of the reasons I left was because I knew I couldn't afford to pay daycare on a teacher's salary. I now have four children who have all attended Stanton City Schools. I myself am a graduate of Stanton City Schools. My entire K-12 education came through Stanton City Schools as did my parents and my grandparents. The question of funding our schools is not a difficult one. It's common sense. Please don't embarrass yourselves by doing anything less than fully funding the budget request from the school board. It takes a village to raise a child. And Ms. Wilson said it before I could, good job. It takes a village to raise a child. So it is your duty to invest in our community's future and to honor those who give their lives to working with our children every day. My remarks were gonna end there. And then my daughter took my phone. She said, mom, I have something to say. I think Bridget inspired her. Good job, Bridget. It is awesome to see you growing up this way. Um, my daughter tells me uh, how they're losing teachers, substitutes, bus drivers every single week. This is not something that happens at the end of the year. They're just falling off already because they know they can apply to another district and get a higher salary. Their jobs are emotionally and often physically taxing. This being said, they're still getting underpaid. The teachers and staff of Stanton City Schools are working hard every day to give the students of this district the education they deserve. They get paid for the work they do in school. They get paid for the grading and the lessons. But that said, so much of the teacher's work goes on outside school hours, lesson planning, preparing, classroom decor, buying supplies, on and on. They deserve to get paid a higher amount for the hard work that they're doing to provide good quality education to the kids that are our future. Thank you, Maggie Cox. All right, thank you. Do you have anyone? Yeah. Hi, welcome. Hi, I'm Carla Hansen, pretty new to Stanton City Schools. I have three children, two in high school and one in middle school. Um, I thought the best way for you to hear what the school needs is from a student. My daughter, Mia, agreed to talk. So for those of you who don't know me, that spares you a great deal from hearing from me. So I'll turn it over to Mia. And we're on Rose Hill Circle, if I didn't say that. I am a sophomore, and this is my first year at Stanton High School. I have had a wonderful educational experience here by taking honors and AP classes. My teachers are encouraging, and they truly want the best for each and every single student. In addition, I've been able to participate in numerous extracurriculars, which include volleyball, forensics, and tennis. For Stan High School to be able to continue to provide these excellent academic and extracurricular opportunities, it is crucial that Stan and City Schools be fully funded. I have benefited greatly from these opportunities and want future students to benefit from them as well. Thank you for allowing me to speak this evening. Thank you. Fantastic. Hey, welcome. Thank you. Hi, my name is Michelle Kelty, and I'm a professor of counseling at JMU and also the director of the school counseling program. I have two uh, boys who have gone through Stanton City Schools. Well, one is in sixth grade and one's a freshman in college. 
Um, so I just want to share a little bit from my sort of professional lens and then also my personal lens as a mom. Um, as somebody who spends a lot of time at schools in the Valley, I can tell you that schools are in crisis. Um, the mental health needs of kids have skyrocketed. And if you look at the data, the rates of teacher burnout are astounding. Um, it's real. Um, my counseling students have incredibly complex cases that get more and more complex every year. You should hear what young children are trying to bear and guess who's helping them. School professionals who have not necessarily been trained in mental health, but they will do anything to help. And that's part of the reason they're getting burnt out. Um, so please talk to some administrators, teachers, and school counselors in Stanton City Schools if you don't know what they're going through. We can't afford to lose more school professionals we already have, and it will continue unless we do something. People have to make a living. Um, so what is the most protected gift in a family for all of us? Whether you're an uncle, a parent, a, uh, you know, you've been a child, it's a child. Um, and how... Do we, how could we say like, let's try to get by with the absolute least we spend on our kids. We don't do that in our homes. We sacrifice to give them better lives and show them by example that they are worth it. And Stanton kids are our kids. Um, one of the things I love about our town is that we know each other's children. Um, I know a lot of kids here that I've just seen throughout the years growing up. It's a wonderful privilege. My son, who's a freshman <clears throat> in college in Florida, wanted to go somewhere different. And then he's reflected and said, Mom, we have such an amazing community. People know each other. They care about each other. You kind of can't get away with doing too much because other parents will call each other. Um, <laughs> Actually, one of his teachers I saw at the pool this summer said, I'm going to text Ben and tell him to keep in touch with you in college. I mean, where else do you see that kind of investment from your, from your teachers? I mean, it was just amazing. Um, and then my sixth grader, we watched a video of all of the, um, the award winners of, of the state, award winners across the country of teachers. And he said, if Mrs. Chapman is not in that video, I'm going to be very upset. <laughs> so... We know our kids love their teachers and our teachers love the kids. Um, but if we shortchange our schools, our community will suffer. Our children will know that we did not choose them in spite of the privileged ability to do so financially. We can do it, so let's do it. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. Jessica. Hey, welcome. Hello, my name is Kristen O'Neill, and I'm an art teacher here in Stanton City Schools. I live on Village Drive, but I own property at Carsbrook Drive. Um, since moving to Stanton in 2017, I have fallen in love with you, City of Stanton. You are the feistiest lot I have ever had the privilege to witness. This is a town in which it flooded twice within a short period of time, and I drove through this city in the aftermath and witnessed you both times helping your neighbors cleaning up and rebuilding. You did it because this is a city of people who understand that our neighbor's success is our success because this town understands that we are stronger together. You are a town of fighters, warriors, and everyday heroes. We are asking you to fight now for our children. They are our future. This is a town of folks who support each other's businesses. How many of you shop local to help your neighbors stay in business? You do it because you understand that your neighbor's success is your success. Having funded schools means more helping hands from our community, supporting the growth of our children, help support your local children. I have observed this town long enough to know that you all really love football. What I love about you, Stanton, is when I go to my students' football games and I see full bleachers, fans cheering for the team as far as the eye can see, because this is a city who shows up for the team. If you have ever gone to a football game like it is your job, because you know the psychological difference it can make for your team to win, you know what I'm talking about. We are asking you now to show up for these kids. If you are one of those, the people out there who have complained about the kids not being all right, but you are against investing in their education, I'd invite you now to examine your contribution to the crisis. This is not about salaries. This is about resources for our children. This is about offering enough caring adults in their lives because it takes a village. This is about offering competitive pay so that we keep the best of the best in teaching, working in our schools so that young families want to move here and join this community, so that our property values don't decrease. 
This is about the success of our children because their success is this city's success. I am a proud property owner, taxpayer, and voter here in Stanton. And just like the rest of us, I ask you, who is willing to support education? You've spoken tonight about what we can and can't afford to do, but we can't afford to shortchange our children's education. These children will run this town someday. And what do we want our legacy to be? What do we want their sense of community to be? History looks favorably upon those that support education. It is the right thing to do. Make our schools a priority. Our, city, our city's future depends on it. For the love of this beautiful city that we call home, please support funding our schools. It is the right thing to do. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Jessica, okay. Can you um, switch the clock? Yeah, there we go. Caller, you may begin. Let's give it a minute. Yes, my name is Ron Gilbert. I live on Lancelot Lane. I would like to start off saying, I think it's very concerning to know right now that our citizens, our parents, our teachers are right now fighting to persuade our leaders to fully fund our school system. Our teachers have gone far beyond their duties these last several years to teach our children, to teach my children through this pandemic, working far more hours at home than we'll ever know, trying to figure out how they can educate our children at home behind a computer screen. Our teachers, our school system right now deserves the best. I work in healthcare, ladies and gentlemen, and I see what it's like to work short staffed. Does our city need or want to see our school systems short staffed because our leaders refuse to give the school system fully funded that they're asking. When I drop my children off at AR Ware, I see Mr. Brown, I see Coach T, I see Miss Lynn Harris, who has been battling cancer, ladies and gentlemen, dedicating her life so she can come to school and teach my children, my boy. They do this because they love it. They do this because they are passionate for our children and our youth. We voted for four of you all right now for the future of our youth, for my children, and you all four know who you are. Do not let me down. I'm asking you to fully fund our school systems, ladies and gentlemen. Our children need this. Our teachers need this. Our schools need to be fully funded. I'm asking you right now to fully fund our children because our children are our future. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, welcome. Hi. My name is Samantha Hopkins. I am originally from Iowa. I moved here when I was 16 and lived in the Farmville area, but I moved back to Iowa when I turned 18. I recently came back here and moved to Stanton, one, because I have friends here, but a major part of it was, and he can attest to it, was the school systems. Um, I lived in an area in Iowa that was one of the top in the state for the school district alone, and that was my biggest concern was the school district for my kids. I have five kids. Um, yeah, I know. I saw your face. Um, <laughs> Uh, my oldest is 15. He is at Stanton High School. And then I have a 13-year-old who is at Shelburne. And my three are at Bessie Weller, which I am secretary for Bessie Weller Pat. Um, they, I have two fifth graders. One is in Miss Moore's class and then Mr. Charles. And my youngest is six and she is in Miss Raleigh's class. Um, I also help run the fundraisers for Bessie Weller. So just with the fundraisers alone that we have done since I have been on the PAT, we have raised $5,000 between our Santa's workshop in December that we did. And um, we did Dunkin' Donuts that we just, or I'm sorry, it's Krispy Kreme. Oh, they're going to shun me for that one. <laughs> oh, Krispy Kreme that we just closed. We raised $1,500 within the last, what, 48 hours. We just closed it. 
prior to that, we did Annie help me attraction books. We raised another $1,500. So with that $5,000 that we raised, uh, there was three of us that delivered, um, $4,000 worth of supplies to the teachers. Uh, most of that I had delivered to my house or traveled to the post office. Um, they did not like me until I told them that I was with the school and um, Pat, and it was for the teachers for school supplies. Um, I spent $4,000 of the funds that we had raised and hand delivered it. And while we were there, those two nights that I was there, I got an additional list and was being told that they didn't know they could do this because they were out of these supplies, tissues, hand sanitizers, pencils, that they were spending out of pocket of their own money because their classroom supply money is $250 for a year for 18 to 30 kids that they get in a classroom. So they have $250 per year for a budget to spend from anywhere from 18, which is, my kids' classroom is 18 kids. And then they have some projects, which is a science project that I know Mr. Charles' class had. He spent $150 out of his pocket for one science project that just for something for them to not have a boring worksheet. It was $150. And this is out of their own pocket. So yes, they're asking for raises, but they're not asking for raises for themselves. They're asking for raises to supply the kids, to make sure that my kid doesn't have this boring test or this boring worksheet that they do, because it's no fun to learn that way. I don't learn that way. And I know my daughter doesn't. And Mrs. Moore can attest to that as well, because she hugs my daughter and my son and my six-year-old every single day. And if given the opportunity, she'd take them home and raise them for me. I know that one. And, you know, we have to back these teachers. We have to. It, we're losing amazing teachers. The bus driver that brought my kids home was replaced because she just couldn't do it anymore. She, she went to, I believe it was a gas station because she was getting paid more in less hours. And it, it broke my heart because... I talked to her every single day when I dropped my kids off at seven o'clock in the morning and I picked them up at three o'clock. We're losing all of these wonderful people because we have to fully fund the schools. And I know you guys are doing everything you can. And I, I know you've heard the same thing over and over again tonight, and you will continue to for the next several meetings, but we've got to do it. And I moved from Iowa to here just for the schools. People are going to continue to come for the school district and they'll move out of this city and this area for a better school district. Thank you guys. Thank you. Welcome. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Stacy Sheehy. I live on Donaghy Street and my fam family has been a part of Stanton for over 15 years. We relocated to this area and we knew that it was a priority to live in Stanton. We looked at Waynesboro, we looked at Augusta County, we wanted to be part of Stanton. And we made that happen, mostly because of the schools. I am a proud parent of a McSwain fourth grader. I have been active with the PTA for the past five years. I've served three years as their treasurer. I am their current president. I am here tonight to show my support for our school board and their proposed budget. School resources that typically require additional funding, which are also directly tied to achievement rates include smaller class sizes, additional support, early childhood programs, and teacher compensation. A study by the Center for American Progress finds that students with schools with higher budgets have significant gains in both reading and math. But this isn't new information. Knowing all that we know, the fight to fund schools continues. Why is that? I, for one, didn't realize the ongoing struggle that our school board had to provide basic funding. Many of us didn't realize that severe cuts were happening. That's on us. It wasn't a secret, but we were sleeping. But we're not sleeping anymore. 
everybody is wide awake. I'm sure your inbox tells you that. We know now. I have heard many times tonight that we need to compromise. We need to close this gap. But the budget presented is the compromise. It's not quite... So much more, but this is our compromise for our, for our students, for our teachers, for our staff. A 6% raise, which is lower than neighboring schools. We're asking for seven additional staff. We need 27 minimum. The budget is our compromise. Everyone attending tonight has done their part to bridge the gap. I've peddled candy bars, donuts, wrapping paper, cookie dough, peanuts, candy. I'm sure you, everyone in this room has done this for our kids. The t-shirt I'm wearing tonight helped our fourth grade class go on a field trip. We are all doing our part and it's really time city council does theirs. It's time to make Stanton City Schools a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good evening. My name is Kristen Siegel. I live at 304 Rainbow Drive. Mayor Oaks, Vice Mayor Robertson, and City Council members, when I chose to move to Stanton in 2013, I did so sight unseen. I had every intention of leaving here after three years. I didn't know anything about the town, anything about the schools, or anything about the community. And then I fell in love. I fell in love with the mountains, with the historic charm of the downtown, but most importantly, I fell in love with this community. And that community was discovered through my children's schools. We could have chosen Fishersville or Waynesboro, both were just as close to my job at Augusta Health, but we chose to live and invest in Stanton because of the deep connections we have to this community. Schools are so much more than just a place for our children to receive an education and our Stanton City school teachers and support staff provide so much to our students. They are counselors, social workers, mental health workers, coaches, and role models. During a parent-teacher conference at Shelburne this past month, I had the opportunity to witness a parent becoming overwhelmed with gratitude at the ability to take home non-perishable food hygiene products and clothes to help fulfill a need that wasn't being met elsewhere. Schools have truly become a safety net for all of our children. We need to invest in them if we truly do care about our future in Stanton. The following quote is taken directly from your finalized fiscal year 2022 budget. Stanton provides the best education in Virginia and is the leader within our region by recruiting, retaining and supporting the best teachers, providing superb facilities and working with institutes of higher learning that train and educate our future leaders, workforce and entrepreneurs. Our institutions afford the, career, the opportunity for all citizens to reach their highest potential through education and career training. If you truly believe these words, you need to show your dedication to the education of our children by fully funding our schools. We have fallen well behind Waynesboro in the amount we contribute per student to our education. Perhaps Waynesboro is more appropriate to use that line from your finalized budget. Look around the room tonight. Look at these people that showed up. These people showed up during a weeknight, gave up time with their families, gave up sleep to be here and speak. These people are not here because they're passionate about good tech jobs coming to Stanton Crossing. What good are good jobs? when no one wants to reside in Stanton because our schools are suffering and all of the teachers have moved elsewhere to take better paying jobs. No one is here tonight because they are passionate about new golf carts or care whether a sign on 250 is lit or not. Because what good are those things? What good are those things when our schools are crumbling? These people showed up because they're passionate about Stanton's children, passionate about our city schools, and they understand that continuing to underfund our schools will lead to teacher and support staff resignations, unsafe learning conditions, and kids not being able to get the education and support they need and deserve. Stanton and its future deserve better. You will hear reference tonight many statistics about the underfunding schools from, for several years, 
and the comparison of funding in the surrounding cities. I wanna leave you with just one last statistic, one that may appeal to you more on a personal level. There was recently a change.org petition to fully fund the Stanton City Schools. In less than four days, the petition got over 1,200 signatures. You may recall in the last city council election, the individual with the most votes received only 227 more votes than the person who came in fifth and was not reelected to city council. The person who came in fourth received only 27 more votes than that individual. In a town where elections are decided on a handful of votes, it would behoove you to listen to your constituents. Even if you are not seeking reelection this year, think about the legacy you want to leave behind. Do you want to be known for all of the good things you did for the city during your tenure, or do you want to leave behind a disgruntled citizenry? I assure you that as parents and those that care about our education, we will not forget the way you cast your votes on this issue this November, nor in November of 2024. Our memories are long when it comes to our children. Thank you for your time. You have more than enough money to fund our schools. Show us that you care about our city's future. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. My name is Amanda Campbell and I live at 1013 East Beverly Street. My husband and I have two children, one in sixth grade at Shelburne and the other in ninth grade at Stanton High School. We moved to Stanton from Augusta County almost seven years ago and one of the things that drew us to the city was the schools. We knew many families whose children attended and teachers who taught in the district. We were attracted by the program offerings, inclusive culture, and community support for education. As many young families do, we chose our home because we believed that public education was a top priority for the city of Stanton. High quality education requires highly qualified teachers, support staff, and sufficient resources. As a former teacher and currently a teacher educator at a local college, I'm keenly aware of the financial strain placed, faced by public schools, the demands pace, placed on teachers, and the alarming teacher shortage nationally and locally. Stanton is competing to attract and retain teachers from an already limited pool. If we fail to compensate teachers and provide adequate resources, the best teachers will not come to Stanton and those who are here will leave. In fact, one of my daughter's best teachers at Stanton High School is leaving at the end of this school year to a nearby district where she will make significantly more money. And this is in addition to the teachers that Bridget listed earlier. But let me be clear, this is not simply a teacher salary issue. Schools need funding to provide a physically and emotionally safe environment for students. In case you haven't been following the research in education, mental health resources and support for students in schools is significantly lacking. Schools are in need of support staff and other resources to enable students, particularly those who are already underserved, to be successful. I believe that regardless of your political stance, education should be a top priority, one that community leaders must work together to support at the highest level. I have read the budget, the commentaries, and the minutes from recent school board and city council meetings, and I simply cannot understand why the city council would not fully fund the schools. This is wrong on so many levels. I won't talk about the numbers and statistics, you already know them. But I will tell you what matters to me as a community member. What matters to me is that all children have access to quality education. Education lays the foundation for opportunities both for individuals and communities. High, high quality education is one that provides the support and resources that enables and empowers children to learn to think critically, to work together to solve problems, to set and achieve personal goals. If any one of you says that this is not of the utmost importance, then you should not be serving in a position of power in this community. And if any one of you agrees that high quality education is important, then how can you in good conscience deny full funding for the district's budget? Please do the right thing and fully fund Stanton City Schools. Thank you. Everybody. Hi, welcome. Hi. Um, my name is Carter Cox. I'm a senior at Stanton High School. Um, I've gone there all four years of my high school education, and I've made a lot of wonderful connections with my teachers and other members of staff. Um, but recently, after returning from year-long quarantine, a bit more, um, <laughs> it's just seemed like a revolving door of administrative staff, of teachers, of janitors, of bus drivers, and it's 
it's just when that sort of thing happens, you can't form those connections. You can't get the support you need. You don't have lasting things. I've heard many teachers say that they don't even bother learning some of the new staff's names because who knows if they're going to be here in a year or two years. And, and I, I came up here with so much prepared and it's all gone. <laughs> but yeah, I, let's go by things, janitor, janitors. Um, I, I, there are, I'm not sure the exact numbers, but there are very few cleaning staff and janitors at um, Stanton High School. Um, I know many of my teachers have started to have to clean their own classrooms and their planning blocks, cutting into time they need to make better lessons, better programs for their students. Um, and I, in fact, we're bringing back even old members of staff. Junior, for example, who's been working with the school system since before my mother was teaching. Um, junior. He, he's had to come back after out of retirement. Um, and because we can't keep staff because we they can get better pay at McDonald's. Um, it's just something I feel we need to invest in and that we need uh, I'm not sure what else to say. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Good evening, Christine Holly, Stanton Education Association. This is not my first address to council regarding funding for the 2022-2023 school budget. I have twice already come before you to emphasize what SCA members have stated through their survey data. And now what you have heard through our students, our parents, our other community members. What we need is additional staff in our schools and livable and fair wages for all staff. I'm gonna stop here with a story because I didn't have one. So my story to you right now is um, a couple of things. Um, rough over, let's say 20 something something years ago, I made more money per day as a substitute than some of our substitutes make now. Um, over 15 years ago now, cause I've been in Stanton City for 15 years, let, let's say again, 20 something something years, I made more money as an instructional aide in grad school than our instructional aides in Stanton City make now. What we need is people. This is what I have been saying to you all for months. How are we going to even get the people that help in the classrooms when we can't pay them a livable wage? Not even a livable wage. And this is not even in the proposed budget. I mean, yes, it's $15 an hour, but is that livable? This is what our children need is people. And if we can't appropriately compensate, we're not bringing the people in. The people in this audience, some of them come in as basically volunteers because they have already made their money in life and they have the time and the resources to donate because it's not for the money. So we are lucky to have these people as volunteers. Other people who we might raise up and become teachers can't afford to take that risk. They're, they're better off taking a risk going to work at the McDonald's or going to work at a, a factory and selling auto parts than to try to take a risk and make a non-livable wage as an instructional aide. And these are the people who could become our next future teachers. I say this again, as, as someone who started out in the field of special education, our IAs have been already, have, have been important to me all along and our people have been important to me. The number of people, our special education instructional assistant earlier who spoke again, so many people who can speak more eloquently than I can. They are telling the stories and I, and I just hope that you are listening to that. I'm a numbers person, so let me get back to that. Um, the budget proposed by the city did not allow for both livable wages and increases in staff. These are the two things that we need. And the proposed budget did not even allow for that. 
Stanton City Schools has historically tried to work within the funding that the city tells them is possible. This has continued since 2009, despite the city's um, uh, Stanton City Schools repeatedly telling you that we are operating on a bare bones budget. With the current cuts, maintaining only the mandated positions by the state, this is not enough. Salaries do have proposed increases, but they are not enough to keep up with inflation or competition. We need people in our schools. To meet this need, we must have livable, livable fair, and competitive wages. Both goals require your action. In summary, we need more than what the SES currently proposed budget provides. We need you to step up and do your part for our students. And this is a community need in the best interest of Stanton City. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, okay. Hi. Hey. Welcome. I'm Krista Smith, 321 Glen Avenue, and I am also a kindergarten teacher at Ware Elementary. Um, in life, you have choices. In 1978, my parents chose to walk me through the doors of Bessie Weller Elementary to start my educational journey through Stanton City Schools. In 1991, I graduated from Lee High School. In 1996, after earning my teaching degree, I chose to come back to Stanton City Schools to begin my teaching career. And Stanton City Schools chose me. 25 years later, here I stand. In that time, my husband and I made the choice to have our three kids attend Stanton City Schools alongside of me. He looked at me and said, I'm gonna trust you on this one. He was a private school kid. Our son graduated just this past year. Our daughter graduates this year. And our, and our youngest is in seventh grade. My children have received a top-notch education, mainly because of their teachers, made a choice to be committed to their learning even though they have been overworked, underappreciated, and grossly underpaid. I've made the choice to stand up and speak, not only for my own children, but also for the precious 15 kindergartners in my classroom, and my friends and colleagues who go above and beyond every single day. I fear that the time has come that our previously dedicated teachers and family in this community are no longer going to choose Stanton City Schools. All they have to do is look around to our neighboring communities and see that those community leaders have chosen to make their schools a priority. Tonight and in the days to come, you have a choice to support my children, my students, my teammates, and fully fund our schools. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Karen Early. I am not a Stan City resident because I cannot afford to live here. I am your Ware librarian, so I service over 400 kids, including special education, kindergarten, up through fifth grade. I'm currently a resident of Mount Crawford, and with gas prices, I commute half an hour both ways. Uh, so, yeah, it's a great time to be commuting up and down 81. Um, the last time I was here in this building, in this room, I was actually being presented as the Ware Teacher of the Year uh, several years ago now. And I know that there's more Teachers of the Year in the audience. Raise your hands if you're out there. Don't, right, as well. So um, you have met our current Teacher of the Year, Mayor Oaks. You have been in her classroom, and one of her little girls is so thrilled to know you because she wears that pin very proudly, and she, she showed it to me 16 times. But to think that you will have to go to her and tell her that her teacher, who has battled breast cancer for the past year, is underappreciated, and that people are saying that Sarah Lynn Harris does not deserve a break to begin her recovery process after her cancer treatments. I would like you to present that to the child yourself. Uh, I know that's the attitude that a lot of people have, that we don't deserve certain things here. Uh, what about our teacher who is recovering from brain surgery? What about myself? I'll be, speak to myself. I have no medical concerns. I'm in grad school. I wanna take three classes this year so I don't have to take two one semester next year. Uh, so I've got some notes here, sorry. There's all sorts of stories we could tell. Uh, my best friend asked me constantly, hey, you can get a job anywhere. You're great. You've been teaching. You have experience. Why do you stay? I stay because this is a small community. I stay because Billy Brown was up here in tears, and I can tease him about it tomorrow, and he'll be okay with that. 
Uh, I stay because if I walk out of this room and see Dr. Smith, he knows who I am. John Venn knows who I am. You guys don't know who I am, but maybe you'll remember me from this point on. Uh, I'm not standing up here asking for more money. It would be great. It would be swell. Um, I have two part-time jobs, though, so I got that covered for now. Don't worry. I'm okay. Um, what I would really love is the people, the people that we need to serve our kids in our classrooms. As a librarian, like I said, I see them all in their good times and their bad, and their times when they don't have anything to do with an adult, and that's okay because we need our space, too. I will tell you about the worst part of my day when as part of my duty I stand in the front hallway and I greet the children as they come into the school and I beg them to say good morning to say hello to acknowledge us to show any sort of respect for a human being that is in front of them and I know that comes from home I spent a month teaching manners in the library it settled in in about four five of them Okay. I know it comes from home. I know it comes from families, but we need you as our leaders to show those families that it is the respect that we deserve so they can show their children to respect one another, to respect their teachers, and to respect their families as well. We don't need more money. We need people. We need those positions covered, and we need the children to know now that we believe in their future. They better believe in it too because they're the only ones who have control of that. We need your help. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hello. Good evening, City Council. My name is Kajo Donkor. I come to you tonight as an athletic trainer, as an educator, as a resident, and most importantly, a father of a child in the Bessie Weller District and two children who will be going to Dixon Preschool next year. I came to stay in 2017, and I fell in love with this city. I knew this is where I want my family to live, where I want my children to learn, and where I want to give my heart for this place. There's nowhere else I want to be, right here. So, so Mayor Oaks, I appreciated your statement about democracy. And just by the tone of voice and the tone of the speeches here tonight, I think that democracy has spoken. What people want from you, what people need from you, what they demand of you. I want to echo what Fire Chief Garber and former Chief Robinson said. We are only successful because of the people we surround ourselves with. If we want the best, we have to invest in the best. There is nothing more rewarding, more invigorating, or more satisfying than watching a child learn and understand and grow. To see, to see a return on your investment after years of trying, after years of building this person, there's nothing better. A wise man once told me, if you do not love children, do not, I repeat, do not go into education. <laughs> our teachers, our soldiers on the front lines serve the community by molding and investing in the future of the world. I see the teachers that make positive, massive impacts from their students, and they're also the parents' lives. But I also see the teacher, I'm sorry, I also see the students who become distraught become heartbroken because they found out their favorite teacher, their role model, their advocate, and their allies leaving the profession for something better. And this is just the norm. This is the beginning, sorry, this is the beginning of the norm. Whenever I have my doubts, whenever I come to San High School and I think I need to do something different for myself and my family, I look at that man, Dante Montague, because he's a role model for me to keep me here. How he serves in this community dwarfs my own. There's no end to the creativity of my coworkers, what they've done with nothing. They made the impossible out of nothing more than just some love and commitment. But there is still a limit. When you throw a pebble into a pond, there is a ripple effect. So my, uh, my city council, I please ask you, we need you to fund us, students, teachers, administrators, and staff. They need to know that you invest in us as much as we invest in you. They need to invest in the future of Stanton, the future of Virginia, the future of the United States, and the future of the world. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Welcome.
Good evening. I'm Ashley Kane, 311 Valley View Drive, Stanton. I'm here because I attended our Stanton City School Board meeting, that, excuse me, March 14th, 2022. I learned a lot about the Stanton City School budget and I decided that I did not like what I was hearing. I do not appreciate how you, my city council, is choosing to prioritize and spend my tax dollars, our tax dollars. In my view, you must make our schools a priority. As a parent of a middle schooler and a high schooler, I was dismayed to learn about lack of Stanton City Schools funding over the past three budget cycles. I've been here before when this high school renovation was being debated. This is not the first time that I have felt our Stanton City Council is underfunding schools. The fact that you sit on millions of dollars in reserve money while our school board drains their reserves to balance the budget and make up for the funding you did not provide is truly despicable. I call it like I see it. Those, <clears throat> those school system reserves are meant for a rainy day. You shortchanged our children when you chose to cut $1.8 million from the schools in fiscal year 2021 and continued that trend in fiscal year 2022, knowingly when you continued to cut the school budget by $223,750. Instead, you elected to increase funding to outside agencies and city departments by over $2.5 million. And you chose to underfund our school system despite budget surpluses from higher than anticipated tax revenues. You have increased funding to Middle River Regional Jail exponentially, 479% since 2007. That's obscene relative to the paltry increases you've given to our schools over the same time frame. This means our educators are currently working with less funding than before the COVID-19 pandemic, and now the public knows it. Teachers and our kids have been through enough. They do not need you adding to their worries or their burnout. And trust me, my son and daughter are worried and concerned by your decisions. You heard from my daughter already. Uh, my son worries that most of his teachers for next year are leaving the division. And this was before the budget news was shared last week. I have read your retreat documents. They include education as a value, but when it comes down to actual action and support of stated values, it is obvious that educa education is not anywhere to be found. The action items from your retreat do not include education. Rather, they include much about economic development of our community. It is apparent to me that you have not prioritized our schools. And it is also apparent to me that you have angered the citizens you represent. This is because schools are vitally important to a thriving, vibrant community. To me, the children and or the energy of children and young people is vibrant. Good schools support strong economic development and make Stanton more attractive to anyone considering investing in our community. When my husband and I invest our income, we choose options for savings that allow us to get the best return on our dollars. And in my opinion, education is one of the best ways we can lift all individuals and our community up. That is a much better return than car incarceration. Education helps people to support themselves and move forward in their lives. Education to me is the superior investment. My parents were both school teachers in Augusta County. I know firsthand the long hours our dedicated Stanton City School educators work, and I do not think for a minute that their jobs have gotten easier with this pandemic. Innovations like childcare for teachers as an added benefit, that, that can be valuable to an employee. I've lived this as a working mom. I took advantage of the daycare center available to me as an employee. It was a terrific benefit, one my employer is proud to have and touts when rec recruiting. This is something you should be happy to fund if it helps retain or re recruit teachers to our system. Let me close with this. You owe this system this money you have denied it. That totals up to two million. That's without interest. You owe it the, to increase or the increase that the school board is asking for this year too, in addition. To do anything less is wrong. I will be watching this and every school budget process extremely closely from now on. I vote. In 2024, some of you are up for election again. Our high school sophomores, juniors, and seniors will be able to join me in exercising that civic duty of voting. I hope they will. 
And I hope you, they will remember your, your time record is up. of funding schools when your they do. Your time is up. Thank you. Mr. Kessiger, we have oh, Hi, welcome. Hi. My name is Jaleesa Wolf. Um, I live in Stanton on Fox Credge Ridge, and I am a 21-year veteran of this school system. Um, I am here tonight for a couple of reasons. One, um, because I'm immensely proud of the people that I work with and the children that I get to serve on a daily basis. I'm also here because my husband's on his fifth deployment defending this country so that we can stand up here and speak tonight. I thought I might do something a little bit different tonight. I have one of the jobs that I have, I have the privilege of working with the special educators in Stanton City Schools. They are an outstanding group of people who come to school every day to make sure that our children who are learning to walk and learning to say, I love you, mom, are celebrated as much as our valedictorians and our state track winners. Every year we start um, on August at a staff development session with special educators. And for the past several years, we've done a reading in a circle to reemphasize why we're in school. We don't talk about what we can't control, which is the money that is gifted to us from our elected officials. We don't talk about the fact that we don't have what we need to do our job, but we focus on what we can do to ensure that our children grow up to be happy and healthy. Every year we start with a reading, and I think this is one's important tonight. It's called, How Are the Children? Among the most accomplished and fabled tribes of Africa, no tribe is considered to have warriors more fearsome or more intelligent than the mighty Maasai. It is perhaps surprising then to learn the traditional greeting that passes between the Maasai warriors. They always say to one another, how are the children? This traditional greeting among the Maasai acknowledges the high value that the Maasai always place on their children's well-being. Even warriors with no children of their own are always given the traditional answer, the children are well. Meaning, of course, that peace and safety prevail, that the priorities of the protecting the young, the powerless are in place, that Maasai society has not forgotten its reason for being, its proper functions and responsibilities. All the children are well means that life is good. It means that the daily struggles of existence are not, do not preclude the proper caring for our young. I wonder how it might affect our consciousness of our own children's welfare if in our culture, we took to creating each other with the daily question, and how are the children? I wonder if we heard that question and passed it along to each other a dozen times a day, would it begin to make a difference in the reality of how children are thought of and cared for in our own community? I wonder if every adult among us, parents and non-parents alike, felt an equal weight for the daily care and protection of all the children in our community, in our town, in our state, in our country. Could we truly say without any hesitation, the children are well? Yes, the children are well. What would it be like if religious leaders began every worship service by answering the question, and how are the children? If teachers began every class by answering the question, and how are the children? If every city leader had to answer the question at the beginning of every meeting, and how are the children? If every business leader and corporate executive had to answer the same question at the beginning of every day, how are the children? Are they well? Wouldn't it be interesting to hear their answers? What would it be like? I wonder, working together, may all our children be well. Nice. Thank you. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Shannon Brown. I live at 616 Woodmont Drive, Stanton. I moved to the Stanton community in 2009 for my husband to be able to attain his education as a physician assistant. At the time when we moved, our daughter was three. We had always intended that we would be returning to our home state of Minnesota. That was where family was, that was where our loved ones were. However, much to the deep disappointment of her grandparents, my five-year-old at the time that my husband finished his schooling said, we can't go back. We love our mountains. Yeah. We became permanent residents of the city of Stanton and we're not going anywhere. We love it here. As a parent, I am so blessed 
to have a relationship with that now 16 year old. She is an open, beautiful communicator. And for whatever crazy reason, trust me enough to talk to me. That's a rarity among teens, I know. In contrast, as a parent, one of the things that I have found that has been the most difficult to hear is a verbal expression from that beautiful girl of absolute helplessness. Over the past two years, she and her peers have experienced the challenges of a global pandemic, political conflict, societal disrespect and unkindness, environmental destruction, and the current global violence happening just across our seas. These things feel so big and so overwhelming to us as adults, but more importantly to our young people. And at that moment when she and I were talking this past weekend, I was somehow being asked to give her a glimmer of hope. Parents, how do we do that? Two days ago, the same beautiful girl sent her father and I a text that had an attachment. She said, have you signed this petition? I picked her up from track that afternoon and the shadow and the doubt and the disappointment that she had worn in the conversation we had that weekend was replaced with a beacon of light. She said, mom, I can do something about this. She said, I'm 16 today, but in two years, I will be able to vote. My peers will be able to vote. The job that you have is an incredibly difficult one. The role that you play for our community and our society is not easy. Balancing a budget is absolutely a challenge. But I want you to understand that our young people have now been made aware of what's happening. They are having honest, intelligent, deep conversations in their classrooms, with their peers, with their parents. They are telling us we need to ta take action. She has been here this evening watching and listening. I couldn't walk out of here tonight without standing up here and doing what I felt was the responsibility as a parent, but as her role model, to speak with you and to ask you to hear what she and her peers are feeling. Please support the young people of this community. They respect you. They know your job is difficult. But they are also watching. And two years from now, her, she, and her peers will be voting. Please make her and her peers proud. Thank you. Mr. Hi. Welcome. Good evening. My name is Tisha Moore. I have um, three homes in Stanton. Their addresses are 300 Grubert Avenue, 330 Grubert Avenue, and 600 Greenville Avenue. If you're not sure where those places are, they are Shelburne Middle School, Ware Elementary School, and Bessie Weller Elementary School. I have been with Stanton City Schools for 22 years. I didn't know I had Jaleesa beat. <laughs> Three schools, and when I started, as I have told many of you in the meetings that I have attended, my average class sizes were 14. When I taught your daughters, they were that size. In this room are students that I have taught that are now teachers. I teach. <laughs> with another student that I taught. It is my proudest moment. I have loved the, the children of Stanton City for the majority of my life. I have survived salary freezes. I stayed. 
I brought my own child to Stanton City Schools after moving into Augusta County because it had the best numbers. I love the scrappy underdogs of children that we teach. Your children. I've been in there where when they were bullied as cheerleaders, I supported them. The changes I have seen in these 22 years concern me. To fully fund this budget is a bare minimum. To fill the gap is a bare minimum. And it's sad. I challenge you to exceed our budget. I challenge you to go beyond what we've asked for because for years as educators, we have been beaten down and expected to be the martyr and expected to pay our way. I funded, I made a list of some of my additional duties that you know aren't in my contract. Number one, feeding my students. I bring snacks to my children because they don't have enough to eat. Funding science experiments. I buy every supply, whether it's graham crackers and um, whipped cream to do plate tectonics or it's batteries or it's wires to, to do circuits, I buy it. Not only do I buy it for myself, I buy it for my team because my team members do not have the husband who is an engineer to help me pay for it. I have provided groceries for my families and my coworkers. I have bought my coworkers' children clothing. I have scrubbed floors on my hands and knees in multiple classrooms because there are not custodians because we don't pay them enough. I have been emotional support for my children, my young teachers, Every day I convince them, I tell them it's not like this. It's not always like this. I have provided my own library much like many of our, of our teachers do because I want my children to have relevant books. Books that have the potential to be banned in today's society. I have paid for my own schooling to better myself as a teacher. I remember when I first started when they sent me to conferences, when I had staff development, when they grew me as a teacher. You know me. I have never spoken before you. It is time for you to stand up and go beyond the measly budget that we ask for and do the right thing. Would you fund your personal budget the way you were funding ours? I think not. Thank you. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi, my name is Chris Ballinger. I live at 143 Bellevue. Um, we're in Bessie Weller. So I'm going to add um, on to, to what was just said because that is kind of where I was going with this. So I just did some math. Um, math is fun. So with a current inflation rate of 7.9% as published uh, by the U.S. Um, government on March 9th, that means that to actually give the teachers a 6% raise, you would have to give them a 17.8% raise. Um, so let that sink in. Um, so a 6% raise is still a cut. <laughs> um uh, also, you know, I, I loved seeing some of the Stanton Kindness shirts in the back there. Hi, guys. How's it going? Um, when the Stanton Kindness Initiative was launched, they had this big, whole, awesome week planned and this big launch planned, and only Bessie Weller was able to do it because the schools didn't have the resources to actually kick it off. So they had to go to the PTAs and the PTAs were so busy raising money to buy school supplies that nobody could do it. Um, and so that is my second point. And then my third and final point is that I've received three emails and messages and phone calls as they go out, you know, in, in numerous forms this year already saying, please, 
Please, if you can possibly take your child to school, drive your child to school, please do so because we don't have enough bus drivers to take your children to school. And that, and I will finish with that. Thank you. Thank you. Would anyone else like to speak? All right. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. We really, truly appreciate the fact that um, you have addressed the council uh, with your concerns, and we have heard you. So thank you so much for coming out. And with that, um, as mayor of the city of Stanton, I now call this meeting adjourned.